I've never been a dipper, bro. I've never dipped. My, my old man, he's such a fucking dipper. You see all the uh I see, what, I that, your, that, old, your old man's a dipper and he uses Dr. Pepper bottles as a is he a big Dr. Pepper guy or Dr. Pepper bottles? Like Has it, he made that mistake? It, yes. Oh. And honestly, that mistake happened um a year and a half ago at my spot that you that you were at when I lived over off of 37th Avenue. Your birthday party. Yeah. Yeah. When he had came over and the next day I fucking took a swig of his dipper, bro. Of his spitter. That's brutal. And it was, oh my God. Dude. I think I think it's a rite of passage though. Like as a dude, I've done it on accident and on purpose. <laughs> on purpose. You know, was it like a you wanna hear it? Yeah, oh yeah, I wanna this? hear it. Okay. So First of all, shout hey, out. Bring bring out the Chevy ad too. Like Ern, he's a he's one of the boys. He hey, gets, shout out David Lipscomb, uh, baseball team. We're in the final four today. I think we're playing Knoxville Catholic or something. We beat Macaulay yesterday. Go Lipscomb. So beating also, the Catholic, you got to beat the Catholics. Twenty two years four. ago today, I found this out after already left the house in this. One of my dad's old players texted me and was like, "Yo, twenty two years ago today, we won the state championship, and they were wearing these jerseys." I'm like, "What are the odds?" So, um. That leads into why I drink dip spit. <laughs> I was I got out of school one day and uh, took a little victory post a little victory lap around the neighborhood with a few friends after school. And uh, so I had victory on my breath for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and on my fingertips. <laughs> it smells like victory out there right yeah. now. Right when I walked in, I was like, God, it smells like victory. victory! <laughs> Johnny drama. Um so anyway, so I had, uh, I was dipping Grizzly Natural at the time. I'm in my truck. It's a rainy day. I'm going down Caldwell next to the Lipscomb football field. So if you pull out of the Lipscomb parking lot, take a right, you go across the stop sign, you go up the hill, you're going towards Franklin Road. That's the victory lap. That's, that, well, yeah, all around that neighborhood, yeah. victory laps. But, There's no Ernest is but, taking but, many victory laps around there. All day. So I got back in my truck, and I'm leaving Lipscomb. So I'm going up Caldwell, and... I have a, I have like a half full bottle of dip spit in my cup holder in my truck. And me and this one other dude both roll through the stop sign going opposite ways. And this cop. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, this guy. <laughs> this now, are you by yourself? I'm in my own truck by myself now at this point. I, I'd left the team of three <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm on my way and, yeah. it's, and it's raining and me and this boat, me and me and this guy both roll through a stop sign, and a cop is right here. And a cop turns his lights on. And I'm like, shit. Like I know my breath. If he pulls me over right now, I know my breath. So I like go down. I get down the hill and I pull over and I just take a glug, glug, glug of this grizzly natural, the saltiest. Hey, bub. Yeah, you- bomb. It, and that's my dad. Shout out, dad. Well, give him an answer, dude. We can pause it. Hey, dad. That I keep What's up? Hey, I'm in the middle of a podcast right now, but I'm answering your call. But yeah, so 20, Jeff Baumgartner let me know that 22 years ago today was the state championship, uh, 2001. And then the next one was, next one was 10 years later. Now, but that, I don't know what day that was, but it was 10 years later. I'm going to call to see if you're still proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you. Bye. Anyways, back to weed. <laughs> so, Did you I, hang on. There is there a part of you that think that thought like maybe I'm just in my own head. Nothing's gonna happen here. Nope. Like what? Hey, nope. maybe maybe vibrate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe vibrate. Vibrate now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, like maybe the cop rolls up, your window rolls down. He's like, oh, you smell like a winner, brother. I didn't have that in my head at yeah, that okay. point. I had word. I had monsters. Surviving in my head. Advance. Yeah, so, surviving so, advance. So important to note. On the back of my truck, I had a, I'm on a boat sticker. I had a Beatles sticker and I had a Bob Marley sticker. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. Just look so, at the camera. Yeah, so, so anyways, so I, I pull over. I just chugged this and now I'm like trying to keep down throw up as the cop is walking up to my, as the cop, I'm trying I to feel up. like that little spark oh, down yeah, there right yeah, now. Yeah. Like, yo, how fucking. So I roll down the window. Oh. I roll down the window. He's like, I was like, man. I was like, you could have. I was like, you could have pulled over either of us. The guy ran it too. He goes, I was gonna pull over. God, dude, we were gonna kill that fly before. Did you just? Did I? No, no. dude, I was about to say. <laughs> but this guy threw year thirteen with that kind of hand-eye coordination. <laughs> um, just Miyagi that fly. Dude. Um, 
So I was like, man, I was like, that other guy ran it too. He was like, I know, I was going to, he was like, whoever pulled over, I was stopping. I was like, and he kept going. I was like, okay, well, <laughs> shit, should have kept going. But he goes, uh, let me see your license. And at this point, he doesn't smell anything on me. I, I would have probably been fine. Yeah. I was in my head. But he goes, uh, let me tell you what, I know a few things about you. He goes, <laughs> he goes, I graduated high school the, the year you were born. I was like, cool. He goes, Ernest is an interesting name. Yeah, he goes, uh, you like the, he goes, you like Saturday Night Live? I go, yeah, he goes, and you smoke weed. I go, <laughs> I go why do you say that? He was like, the bumper stickers, dead giveaway. You just start puking all yeah, over the yeah. bucket. <laughs> he was like, the bumper stickers, dead giveaway, get home safe, it's raining. And I'm like, that did, like, I would have been fine, dude, I was so messed up about it for the rest of the day, and I'll never forget that story, and every time I go through there, I stop all the way now. And you just think to yourself, man, I really wasted. Why in the fuck did I chug, I chug my own dip spit? That was like the dumbest stoned thing I've done. I was like, oh, this will this will get rid of the weed on my yeah. breath if I just drink my dips. Yeah. Cop pulls me over. Oh, my God, I'm going to prison. And you just start fucking chugging <laughs> yeah. the dip spit. That's like, did you see the dude that swapped seats with his dog and he got pulled over with a DUI? He got... You see wait, that? Wait, what? Yo, my man got pulled over. He was definitely drunk. I mean, definitely. <laughs> he was something. He's in the passenger seat and the dog's in the driver's seat when the cop gets there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dog just looks up. Yeah, is there some kind of issue here? <laughs> yeah. Fuck, man. That's. I'm sure he went to jail, yeah? I'm... <laughs> the pound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he went to the pound. <laughs> Oh, oh, man. Speaking of grit and spit, how about we talk about the Chevy Silverado? Do you want to learn about this new Chevy Silverado EV? I'm intrigued. So, the first ever all-electric Silverado joins the franchise with the most valuable truck, the MVT, we like to say, the Chevy Silverado. Now, it's an all-electric vehicle. We've got the chance to see this thing and experience it, and let me tell you, brother. What do you like about it? Wow. Wow. I'll tell you right now. Okay. Available 400-mile range GM estimated on a full charge. I was talking to one poor bastard, and he was like, man, I got this hybrid. I won't say the brand vehicle because no free shout-outs, but he was like, man, they say on a full charge, I'll get uh, 60 miles. And so I was like, brother, let me put you on some game. The new all-electric Silverado EV that's came out, yeah. you get 400 miles on a full charge, over 10 feet in length in the bed with a multi-flex tailgate combined with a multi-flex mid-gate. So if you get caught in there, a caught, gate. it's a lot of gate, dude, a lot of gate. A large 17-inch diagonal display screen. It can tow up to 10,000 pounds of max towing. Uh, zero to 60 in under 4.5 seconds with wow mode. 4.5, your boy ran that at his pro day. Up to an impressive 785 pounds of torque. Do you know what torque is? Yeah, it's like where, that's where things get, start really getting going. <laughs> You're goddamn right there. <laughs> head over to Chevy.com to learn more. Um, head over to Chevy.com to learn more. That is our... Uh, that is our presenting sponsor, the Chevy Silverado. That's great. Strong, dependable. I'm sold. Fast. You going to buy one? You are Chevrolet. I am fucking Chevrolet, <laughs> yeah, dude. dude. Um, where do we go from here? Dude, my boy Mitch, I was like, hey, give me the boy. I know Ernest has been killing it recently, but I need to be able to quantify. I need to be able to get my arms around everything he's done. Okay. Look at this list of, of updated shit on Ernest. Good little list. It's a good list. Good little list. The one that I'm like, had no clue about is you won an award in March during the Country Music Association uh, Triple Play Awards, which mm -hmm. honors songwriters who have written three number one songs within a 12-month span. Your songs were not all on Wallen's record, not all separated. Wallen's Wasted on You, Sam Hunt's Breaking Up Was Easy in the 90s, and Kane Brown's One Mississippi. Yeah. Dude, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, Triple Play Award is a is a sweet award because there's guys in town that have written 20 number ones, but the timing of them haven't lined up to where you get three in a 12 month period. <laughs> That's my second triple play. <laughs> I got one last my year man, and I dude. hope to get one next year. That's like, that's a, it's not a ridiculous goal to set. I mean, it's cool and I don't take it for granted, but we're just writing a lot of songs and, um, Thank God for the artists that are cutting them and the people that are listening to them. Cause I, I don't know, like, I don't know that I'm doing anything way different now than I was doing five years ago. Um, but it's clicking and so I'm not going to slow down now.
there's got to be like a momentum and a skill there too. Like you're like, thank God the artists are cutting them, but it's like, you're writing songs. You got to be in your mind thinking, oh, this would be perfect for so-and-so. Kane Brown, Sam Hunt. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you're very close with Wallen because you've written, what was it, 11 of his 36 songs on his new album that dropped yeah. in March. But there's got to be a part of you. I mean, that's that's a fucking skill, bro. It's crazy. It seems like you're figuring it out. Figuring it out. And uh, relationships are important uh, that have grown. Like my relationships with other artists, too, because you can just bypass so much. Uh in between middleman stuff and just text a song to song or um write it with the artist. Yeah. So yeah, I've been I've been very blessed to be able to kind of wind up where I'm at right now. And I ain't gonna stop anytime soon. He said I'm blessed. Like you're fucking you're a dog right now, brother. Mm -hmm. Does it get easier? Like now when you like write a song or or anything like that and you shoot out that text or anything else, has it gotten easier for you to be like, you know, people are probably like, man, Ernest fucking wrote me something. Sometimes. But, like, you know, the artists are artists. So, like, putting the other cap on, they're getting a lot of songs sent. You know, like, sometimes I doubt, I doubt they're listening to it the second I send them to them. So, like, timing is everything, too. Like, I could send you a song and you never hear it. Then I'll see you on a bus at a festival in three months. Like, yo, did you ever hear that? No. Then I'll sit down and play it. And then your person's like, yo, this is crazy. It's like, yeah. it's been crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey man, you should make what I said. You should make a song about a fucking yeah, some hometown moment. You're like, yeah, I sent you this a couple months back. Here it is again. Yeah, check it out again. Yeah, that happens. But, um, mo dude, it's all it's all about momentum and just like anything else, it comes and goes in waves. And keep your feet moving when the wave is slow, and keep your feet moving when the when the wave is all for you. Because uh, when it's hot, it's hot. When it's cold, it's cold. There's really no in between in this in this. It's either hot or cold. When's the last time it's been cold for you? Been First a minute. Time I was on the bus. Come on now. It was, <laughs> it was been cold. a minute, bro. It was hot on the bus, but it was cold. I was out here drinking 17 mimosas at 10 in the morning. <laughs> yes. Hey, come meet me over at the tavern. Yeah. Go, yeah. Let's order up some cocktails. I'm like, brother, it's, it's 11 a.m. You were still playing ball. We were, I mean, that was a... We're going to Logan's after this. Dude. Logan's Road. No free out. shout outs. No Logan's free Road. Shout outs, Logan's. Dude. <laughs> Logan's, I think, is either close or was close at one point. Still close. Because they were like, yeah, I would assume still close, like if they know what's good for them. And they're yeah. like, hey, could we, you guys do it? Because they also, they also uh, rep uh, Riley Green, too. Yeah. Like, could you guys do a, a podcast in a Logan's Roadhouse? We would love nothing more. Yeah, dude. Then do a podcast. I might start doing all my podcasts <laughs> out of Logan's Roadhouse. Are you firing your pod back up? Yep. We've, uh, we've backlogged two episodes. I'm basically doing an episode a week now. I'm just doing it out of my bus. I had this crazy idea to start doing a podcast on a bus. Um, I just something I'd never seen done before. Ever. I don't think it has ever been done. Ever. So we're innovative on that side. Yeah, of things absolutely. And, uh, we're doing it off of the bus. It's pretty great. Is it still called just being earnest or just bus and earnest? Touring with the boys. <laughs> Touring with the boys. <laughs> are are you, you with the fellas? Are you able to say who the guests are? Yeah, I got Hardy. He'll be uh, my first episode back. I just did one with Parker McCollum. I got Bailey coming up. I'll probably get young Glenny Balls out here. Dude, Glenny's been making some waves, man. Glenny is a wave. He is a fucking <laughs> wave, dude. dude uh, Emmy Balls. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, seems like you can't have your boy Morgan on for what is it? At least six weeks. Yeah. He's yeah. on. He's on. We we just do like a. He's on vocal rest. We do like a. Be like doing a podcast with Stephen Hawking. <laughs> this fucking things have been pretty crazy on the road. <laughs> yeah. It's been a good time. We're blessed. Yeah. Oh man, I love you more than my hometown. <laughs> were, <laughs> you imagine? Were you, were you uh, were you with him? What were you torn around with him when when you, uh, whatever fucking happened when he strained them vocal cords or whatever the fuck it was called? Yeah, I've been with I've been with him all year. And be honest, bro, everybody's getting a little bit hoarse. You see people like. Or canceling shows left and right. Ingrid and Andrus just had to cancel some. It's Bro it's real, dude. It's a grind out here, especially my man singing his ass off, like singing his ass off. He's I don't know if you've been you've been to have you seen a Morgan show? No, my man is working out there. So this is a good little it's a good little break for everybody. I still had shows. We're gonna pick back up and um, it's gonna be an awesome rest. Podcasters of the are even feeling it. Yeah, I was hoarse there for a minute. You've been going. Yeah, we we keep the ship going. We don't we don't yeah yeah we we don't <laughs> you talk a lot. we don't we don't stop because I remember when you were uh, were talking at your your kid's birthday party. Yeah, oh my, yeah. 
Morgan, what's what's up with Morgan? You're like, oh, he strained his vocal cord. Yeah. Started talking about making that making that little reel. Yeah, dude. Uh, I went to the doctor. Hilarious. Fucking was it vocal pesitis? Vocal pesitis. That's me. That's my own that's walk. Yours. That's not what you were saying. Um, do you guys ever bust his balls? It's all one big ball busting community around there. Yeah. Like, hey, send us a video. No. Give me a ball buster. Give me a ball buster you tossed Morgan when he had the whole vocal rest thing. I don't really give him any ball buster on the vocal rest. Just in general, in life, we just bust each other's balls. Yeah. Or smack the back of each other's necks. Like, it's probably more physical ball busting. Oh, you guys do the slap necks. Yeah, we slap necks. Like, are we talking hard or are we talking like, hey, give me your neck? We come for that neck. Slap pretty hard. Really? Yeah. I feel like that's like a, that's like a fighting gesture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yo, we, yeah, we tussle. Sometimes we be out here smacking. Yo, give us a fucking road story with the boys. Let's see here. I'm trying to think. You can't be doing these shows like you guys are doing these shows together. Like you guys are like best fucking friends out on the road. Like I know you've got to have something in the tank, at, especially as of recent. Bro, with the, flower shops, your little deluxe edition that came out. I'm trying to think because, dude, the way our tour is set up now, it's like run so tight ship professional. Like we all pull up. We all have multiple buses to our own crew so like we got the parking the back lots are full of like there's probably 20 buses you got your own bus 20 now. trucks i got my own bus my band's got a bus so uh we pull up and like wake up have breakfast maybe get a workout in i don't really even see morgan until close to showtime and then we rock a show are you guys just basically all on your own bus like just Pretty doing much vic- doing, our doing, own, doing our own thing. We'll play, play. yeah, I'm doing victory laps and playing <laughs> skate three on my bus most of the time. And then, like, a lot of nights, my first time seeing Morgan in the day is, like, right before he goes on stage. And then I'll see him when I come out to do either cowgirls or flower shops. Mm-hmm. We'll dap up, boom. And then as soon as I get off, I'm either leaving the city or going to bed because he'll still have, like, another 30 or 40 minutes in his set. So that's, like, the juxta coolest thing ever. And then you know, he'll tell you too, because he used to have to do it with Florida Georgia Line. Like sometimes you get off, you're done, you're done with your set. And it would be like, man, I'd love to just go pass out right now. But then you remember that God has blessed you with the opportunity to go sing for 45,000 people, <laughs> yeah. a song that everybody knows. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I can do this. Like I'll be a uh, victory lapped out, just sitting on my bus post show in my sweats or pajamas, sometimes just straight rocking a robe and some Gucci flip-flops, like nothing else. And then I'll be like, oh, damn, I got to throw some jeans and boots on. I'll tell you a funny story about something like that. We were, when we were playing in Staples Center or Crypto.com Arena, it's Staples Center. <laughs> That Kobe, well, yeah, cri- crypto Kobe, you know. Kobe didn't die for them to change that <laughs> yeah, to, to change crypto. Some fucking crypto digital currency, yeah. and the Bloods are not happy about that either. <laughs> um, <laughs> blood dough. Dog, dog. Yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, when you when you're fucking when you slow it down in the music world, you've got to get into the stand up world. Yeah, but I can't do both, man. I can't be. Yeah, you can't. Why not? Think of those shows. What do you get when Magic Johnson bites an alligator? Gatorades. So, anyway, so we're the, we're at the Staples Center. We were at the Staples Center, and Wiz Khalifa and Michael Phelps were in my green room smoking KK, dog. Like, I was in rotation with Michael Phelps and Wiz Khalifa and my wife, Delaney. Dream rotation. I just couldn't believe it. So then Morgan's going on. So we all take the elevator. We go up. We got this suite. It's like top, middle, looking straight down. And I really hadn't gotten to watch a Morgan show like that all year. So I'm up there. With Michael Phelps, Wiz Khalifa, some other people were watching. Uh, Wiz pulls my, he's like, some KK rolled by Wiz. And I was like, yeah, dude, he's like, yes. Fuck yeah. It's like dude. Santa Claus giving you a candy cane. Yes. Like, it's like too good. So I'm sitting up there, can't believe it. I'm wearing regular clothes, civilian clothes. And then uh, I look up and it's like, oh shit, I got 12 minutes before I gotta be down there and we're doing flower shop. So I elevator rush, boom, boom, throw on a new fit. I'm lit. Uh, walk out on stage. So in my mind, I'd just been watching the show happen on the massive Jumbotrons and then Tiny Little Morgan down here, big production. And uh, I walk out there, I'm like, dang, that's crazy. Wiz can see me. Wiz is watching me right now on this massive thing, right? Because you're thinking of how you're watching Morgan. Right. You're so baked. Yeah, you, man. Wiz right. Is just watching that's me. literally, I'm in my head. I'm doing flower shops. And after flower shops every night, we 
I, we throw roses. Morgan's got a bouquet. I got a bouquet. We go out and milk it at the end of the thing. You know, just play the game. You're playing the game, dude. So I get my roses, and I go out there and I see this group of fellas, and one of them was a tall black dude, but I wasn't like, oh, that's Wiz because Wiz is up here in my mind, right? So I just see, I see the fellas. It's dark. I can't really see much. I was like, oh, I'm throwing roses to the fellas. Yeah. Didn't think nothing of it. I get back to my green room. Seth, my manager, runs in here. He's, dude, Wiz caught your fucking roses. I was like, no way. Wiz is up there. He goes, no, Wiz came down to watch from the pit. I was like. What? And there's this picture. I'll I'll we'll put it in post, dude. Wiz is the happiest year. Wiz has his sunglasses on. He's holding up a bouquet of roses and just cheesing so hard. Bro, that is so fucking dope. Wiz caught my roses. Wiz Khalifa. The Wiz Khalifa. The Wiz Khalifa. Yeah, dude. All the mixtapes and everything. He like he was the fucking that free the very first freestyle I remember like 2010 or 11. Like, bro, I sprained my ankle. At a Wiz Khalifa concert at Vanderbilt, my senior year of high school, in the basketball gym, I was trying to get from, I was one of those people who was like, had normal ass seats, but I jumped over the railing to get down on the floor. Lost a little bit of your athletic ability. Or gained it, dude. I went off after that. Yeah. <laughs> I went off. That was pre-scholarship. Yeah, that was <laughs> um, yeah, so I was like, you know, I'm trying to play it cool, but I'm also just glued to the couch with talking to Wiz Khalifa. This is Wiz. This is Michael Phelps, the winningest dude in all of Olympic history. And I'm pretty sure Olympics go back to Jesus time. Like, I'm pretty <laughs> sure, dude. He has more gold medals than Jesus. <laughs> Think about that. I cannot wait to get into our family. Oh, we're going to get into that. We will get into that later <laughs> when we start having fun. Uh, bro, that is sick. Yeah, and two of the most notable yeah. well, weed and then, smokers in all of fucking time. Segue into my weekend coming up. Yeah, exactly. Willie fucking Nelson, bro. You're going to be... Me and Jelly Roll are opening for Willie Nelson. God. Dude. Talk about the... Yeah, let's give a fucking round of applause. Yeah, I'll round of applause for that. That's one of those... That. That's one of those... Um, you'd never dream up that lineup in a million years. Especially, like, go back to 2011. I'm at Jelly Roll's apartment over here in the cut. Getting dabs from Jelly Roll. He's just a rapper. I'm just a rapper, aspiring rapper. Obviously, I was private school. He was probably but still number <laughs> B Rad Malibu's most wanted yeah. in there. I'm like, oh my gosh, Jelly Roll. Fast forward, we got a number one song at Country Radio together, Son of a Sinner. And then you guys are like, what's so dope is you guys are like Nashville based, yeah. But yeah. you've you've both been on the bus, and your guys' growth and trajectory it's over the wild. last, especially as of recent, is fucking crazy bro and jelly jelly rolls just doing it his he's on a different plane of celebrity right now bro. he's got a fucking uh documentary now coming out coming out on just, hulu just oh, oh just saying for american idol which i mean i know they got some cameos of me in there either that or they were just filming for no good reason <laughs> a lot you're texting jelly like hey am i gonna make hey, we still in that yeah, thing yeah. Am I gonna make <laughs> the in that thing Can i post on instagram yeah, yeah. um joe but rogan God to go damn. from that yeah to go from that to there's going to be a poster on my wall that is Willie Nelson, Jelly Roll, and me. That's like... I just got chills, bro. I got chills, too, and... Oh, there he... Gotta get him. Got his ass. Got his ass. Boy. Little stupid bitch boy. Bitch that made boy, dude. <laughs> you bitch you made got an boy. Enemy, dude, yes. Um, oh, another one. Another one. So that... The that poster is you got, you're going to be hanging up a fucking poster of you, Jelly Roll... And fucking Willie Nelson. Yeah, I ordered a shirt from I'm a Gene Willie that has Willie Nelson's face on it. I'm for sure wearing it as I perform. Like, oh my God. I don't even care. I don't even care to get to smoke with Willie. I know it's fine. Dude's 90. I'm blessed to even be in the same building as him. I know they got him protected with, with all like germs and all that. I just got to shake that man's hand. If, if we get a picture to the three of us, incredible. If not, like, will you please sign my bandana? Like, I'm gonna do the. Th I'm gonna fanboy for Willie Nelson. I'm you never to, fanboy, man. but like, bro, and he's almost gone. That's what I'm saying for the for the for what I'm trying to do with country music and where I pull inspiration from is more from that era than anything. Like the Haggards, the Waylands, the Willies, Chris Christopherson, uh, the Highwaymen. Yeah, yeah, the Highwaymen, and it's like we're doing a show with. With him. You at least have to allow him to hand you a joint. 
Oh, Whether or not he smokes. Oh my, dude, I'll go scrounging near where his bus was parked looking for roaches. Dog. Like, <laughs> just Willie Roach? It's like, oh, not, just not even going to ask. You're not even going to ask. You're yeah. just going to I got a Willie Roach, dude. Yeah, that's it. Like, I got a pack of cigarettes from John Daly. I'll never smoke one of them, but I got a John Daly pack of cigarettes sitting in my golf bag right now. I asked for one cigarette. He's like, just take the pack. And I was like, what oh. an honor. Oh, uh, yeah. And that's basically your father. That is my dad. That's, yeah, yeah. That's my dad. Um, yeah, bro, this life is crazy because you go from, I'm still such a fan of the things I get to do and the people I get to see. I'm a fan of my friends. Like, I'm a fan of Hardy. It's, it's like, but the barrier is broken. And I'm sure it's the same thing playing ball. It's like when you're on the other side of the field from Tom Brady, like, you get a little tickle in your dick. Absolutely, <laughs> bro. There's no way you I don't like when it was grow up seeing these people and now you're in the same field of work with them. So it takes away the small talk barrier, you know, the little caution tape between you two. It's like now mono and mono. Yeah, dude, if I got to meet Luke Keekley, who is my age. Yeah. But yo, you are, you were fucking him, dude. But I, I'm with you. Like, there's always an element to myself that, you know, it's cool we get to do like podcasting and everything else. But anytime we get to meet somebody that is like of status or somebody that's like, I've like look up to or anything else, I definitely like always want to take that moment to be like, yo, yeah. I am a fan yes. of your fucking work, bro. Yeah. It, I'm like not too cool to be a fan. Yeah. And it, it, like, that's the, that's the best part. Like, how gay is it if you're just like start to posture with them? Like, oh, I can't speak on how gay anything is. I'm not in comedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean. I right? No, dude, I totally know what you mean. First of all, make it great again. Yeah. Anyways, um, uh, <coughs> and we can decide as a team whether we leave any of that in there. But um, the gay, you know, the gay thing. Uh, <laughs> Tarot is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Tarot, you can book any car you want for just about any occasion from a community of local hosts across the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. Good, I eh? Book an SUV for a road trip, something easy and affordable for getting around on vacation, or test drive an EV. I use it all the time. I love it. They got cool car options. Uh, you can even get a vintage car, exactly, or something classy for a special event or photo shoot. Every trip is backed by liability insurance, terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Find your drive. Forget boring rental cars at tarot.com. Dude, the, the, the best part of what I do for sure, and, you know, and I think you two now being in the podcast, like how you cross lifestyle, like the, like the Beer Olympics are going to be athletes, comedians, musicians. And I love... Like, I love comedy so much. So, like, I love comedians. Bert, like, Shane. Shane's maybe the best comedian on earth. Bro. At this time in the world. Yes, And it's bro. like, yeah, to get to, I'm, I'll, you know, meet Theo at the well for coffee and kick shit for 20 minutes and then be on my way home and I'll see you when I see. Like, I love getting to hang with those types of people and like-minded individuals because I do love comedy so much. And it's like, God, it's not also serious, you know? And then you get to meet these people and they're just... Just saying, they like hanging with us because yeah. we do something different. Yes, man. Yeah, it's, it's like sick. especially like com like comedians. It's always like athletes want to be entertainers. Entertainers want to be athletes. You got the you know the entertainers want to be comedians. Right. Comedians want to everybody like everybody wants to. Nobody's happy with themselves. No one's happy with themselves. <laughs> yeah, that's dude. where the best comedy comes from too. That's right. We were at Shane's. Like I was on a uh, Shane Secret podcast yesterday. It either drops either dropped. You're listening to this on Thursday. It either drops today or it dropped yesterday. But, dude, and just seeing the way Shane lives. Like, my man, it lives the dorm room college life. 35-year-old talking yeah. about sharing a townhouse apartment. He's got three people downstairs, uh, a couple people right there in that main floor, and then him and his boy, Matt, live upstairs. Yeah. And just, like, a massive, like you just said, one of the best comedians going right fucking now. Yeah. Just literally, like, oh, yeah, we'll get into this podcast, like, after we do a few games of UFC. And we're like passing the sticks and everything else. That's incredible. And he's like, yeah, this is, he's like, this is it. This he's is like, this is why I couldn't do the morning because, you know, we wake up a little later. Like one man's morning is another man's afternoon. Yeah. But dude, I'm just not even built that He was like, bro, way. why do you, why, why, why are you living like this? He goes, dude, I'm saving money. What are you talking about? That's a good, that, that makes a good comedian. It's like, you know, Theo shows up driving a Nissan truck, like an <laughs> older Nissan truck. He's like, bro, you could be driving anything you want i'm pretty sure but it's like i would it'd be weird if theo von hopped out of a range rover no <laughs> doubt like yeah, yeah yeah 
You know, like I see and Shane did say we're walking up the stairs. I'm like, brother, <laughs> you live amongst the people. Yeah, because it's what makes comedy good. It is, bro. I've seen Theo literally driving. You remember when he posted, uh, he had the black nutcracker. He said, I just picked up a Cat Williams statue. <laughs> I ran it. <laughs> no. he, had a, he had like a lifestyle, life-size nutcracker last winter that he got from like Michael's or something. And I ran into this man at the well in Green Hills and had that nice fucking coffee shop, by the way. That fucking statue was in the back of his truck. Just picked up Cat Williams, you know, that is so he funny. Pull dude. up in a little old truck with a big black nutcracker in the back that he's calling Cat Williams. <laughs> Only a comedian. Only a comedian, bro. <laughs> Their brains think so much differently, man. It's insane. Oh. But I do think your brain, like, that's why I'm always like, every time I'm around you, I nudge like, hey, you got any new jokes you've written up? Like, I think you're a funny cat. Thank you. You are too. Real yeah. recognize real. <laughs> <laughs> but there's something about the the people like, you know, Jelly Jelly's funny. It's like you guys being able to freestyle and think on your feet and be so witty. It's just always impressive to like witness that in real fucking time. Like my brain operates slowly. You know yeah. what I mean? I got dial up internet going on on my head. Like me, I got to sit down and actually think through stuff. You Man, like oh, write notes in a journal Love and that. make yes. a whiteboard and stuff. Yeah. Are you a Virgo? Yes. Yo, that is hilarious Yo. that you just called my shit like that. Yeah, say, that's so Virgo, dude. <laughs> a Virgo fucking horoscope shit thing to do, dude. God, what are you two wing three? Three winged. No, there's a no, no. Yeah, yeah. Three, three wing two, three wing four. What's the four? Oh, you. But yes, an achiever. Yeah, you're an achiever. Yeah, an achiever. You want to get drinks later? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we I mix. Think we get along. Yeah, we mix up nice. Yeah. <laughs> what are you? What Enneagram are you? Enneagram, I'm a two wing three. What's two? Helper? I must not be. I'm an achiever. <laughs> oh. Three. Oh, yeah. So you're a three. Yeah. You're a three. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say, oh, you're you're a you're a rescuer. That's so why I think I a two is like, oh, like yeah. I need rescuing. Like Delaney might be a fucking two. I think she might be a two. She's a Virgo, though, yeah? She's a Virgo. Because we've talked about it backstage. She would know more about the, the Enneagram stuff. I, I don't know, man. The The astrology thing is is pretty funny to me, but, like, they, so is religion. So it's like, you know, like... Hey, but there, there's nothing like, like, thinking the astrology stuff is bullshit and all that, all those things, right? But when you're reading some of those personality traits... I'm starting thinking I'm getting like, trolled. Like, who, somebody... Hey, hang on a second. Yeah, yeah. Hey, wait. How did you know that I had a TV coming <laughs> yeah. in this week? <laughs> yeah, now would be a good time to buy a 57 inch plasma screen. It's yeah. like, wait, I just bought one of those. Yeah. How, did they, how did they know? Yeah, bro, that shit, that stuff messes with your mind. It does. But I'm fucking, I, I'm, I'm into it. I love it. I, I, yeah, I do too. I, I, like, I secretly love it. Like, if somebody's making fun of it, I'll join in. Like, yeah, shit's yeah. Like, hey, Some people wake up and read Jesus is Calling. I, I wake up and read Saturn is Returning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, where were we? What were we fucking talking about? Yeah, we've been all over the place. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about Theo picking up Cat Williams. Quick-witted, freestyling. Quick -witted, yeah, freestyling. dude, it, yeah. I think, I think your podcast rocks, and Taylor, but you're not here now, are you? So this podcast rocks because of the people you have, the common theme with people you have through, with the exception of, you know, a few coaches and stuff like that who have different brains. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But like, for the most part, we all just like to have a good time. And they know that this bus and this podcast is just about a good time. Yeah, especially when you know, like, okay, I can cut it up a little bit. Yeah. I don't have to feel like, okay, maybe what I just said there, like, I know I said wrong. some stuff that's going to get cut out of here already. Maybe. I'm, you know. <laughs> maybe. I like, to, <laughs> maybe. I like to lean in a certain way. I like to get some clicks. <laughs> gonna get some clicks. Yeah, we like to get some fucking traction out there on the net, bro. Yeah. Um, but, man, just thinking, all you have left now is Snoop Dogg. Have you smoked a Snoop? Oh, Bro, it's like Snoop, Snoop Dogg, I'm Willie so, Nelson, Snoop Dogg's Wiz weed. Khalifa, and I'm just going to throw in Michael Phelps because of lack of yeah. thinking of somebody else. But that's, that's a, I need Seth to, yeah, Rogan Seth, would be one. Seth that's like Rogan. a Mount Rushmore type of, I got to smoke with Seth Rogen. I got to smoke with the Rogans and, <laughs> and um, Snoop. So when we were in Auckland, New Zealand, um, we, we got like in touch with this, the VIP concierge who like hooks up all the rappers with like a foreign car and weed when they get over there. So I got, I was, when I got to Auckland, I had like this crazy little Mercedes sports car and he gave me the rest of the weed that Snoop had left in Auckland. It was like an ounce and a half of like big weed. And then we got into, we flew from Auckland, not with the bud because we were getting more there. We got somewhere in, I think it was Sydney and they brought us a bag of weeds, 
and uh, Lamborghini Urus. And it was like, dude, I'm out here living like a rapper on a country kind of con- country tour in Sydney. But low key, that you're that's that's the wave you want to be on. Like you. You started off, yeah. <laughs> Come on, yeah. <laughs> you know I love that shit. Like, you got the, you had the, you know, you had the. I love that. You shit. like started off like wanting yeah. to do the whole rap game That's and everything. If else, I get, like, if I get to live my rapper fantasies without like, yeah. you know, actually ever having to rap. Hey, low key bridging some gap to where you're doing like kind of both. Well, bro, that's why. Like, we got that song I wrote. I uh, helped Morgan write a verse for this little Dirk song that's coming out on the little Dirk Broadway Girls, little Dirk Morgan. I think. You know, I don't know. I think we're going to have, like, a Money Bag Yo song with Morgan probably at some point. I help pin. Like, I get to have a foot in the, like, the rap game. It's not like I got fucking Coolio on a song. It's like, we're no, we're in the streets with the rap shit. And the boys and fuck like, with you, too. Like, Wiz Cleaver holding up a goddamn roast cheesing, bro. I got to find that photo, bro. And like, well, boy, you got respect out there, man. Trying. Trying. But it's like... Back to just let's let's just have a good time. I think it's yeah. disarming if we know we're just gonna have a good time. Yeah. Uh, segwaying with the Snoop Dogg. Um, I'm saying that you just had something drop. What what was the song? Like? What did you just release? Takes after you. I just put out Spotify single Nightlife. With, oh 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 yeah, with 49 Winchester. Yes, came out. It's an old Willie Nelson song. It came out today. It came out this morning. Shout out the boy. But what I was talking about with Snoop Dogg, he just had a viral clip talking about the streaming industry. Specifically, Spotify. On have you seen it? No. Can you bring it up? We can take time and cut out the dead space. But uh, basically, Snoop was calling out the streaming industry. Like we got to do a better job of taking care of the creators because back in the day, when you would sell, you know, thousands, millions of CDs and everything else, you're selling them out of your vehicle. You're, you know, it's it's a physical CD or tape or whatever that you can buy, right. and you would see profits from that. Whether you're doing a split revenue deal or however you're getting paid from your label. Um, and now with streaming, a lot of things are exclusive to streaming. Yep. You're not really selling those records. You're not really selling those CDs. You're not really seeing, like when you go to, a, I, I think you compared it to with uh, the box office. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, at a box office, when you get, when you sell uh, X amount of tickets and you kind of see that revenue generation, you know, the talent is able to split inside of that revenue stream. Right. Now with the streaming industry, with Spotify and everything else, it seems like Spotify does a, you know, is really buttoned up to kind of take advantage of the creator instead of, sitting next to the creator and allowing everybody else to make their fair share in the whole thing. And we can listen to throw on the headphones. Also look at this. I found and we gotta send that send that do you have Bloss's number? I'll send it to Bloss. Send it to Bloss so he can Dreaming chop that get, in when you're when you're together. talking about it. Cause I don't understand how the fuck you get paid off of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, could somebody explain to me how you can get a billion streams and not get a million dollars? Like, that shit don't make sense to me. Like, I don't know who the fuck running the streaming industry, if you in here or not. (laughs) But nigga, you need to give us some information on how the fuck to track this money down. Because one plus one ain't adding up to two. That shit don't add up. And I have to say it. Because that's the main gripe with a lot of us artists is that we do major numbers with streams and this shit, but it don't add up to the money. Like, what the fuck is the money? When I first came out, my records would sell based off of physical. If you sold a million copies, that means if $9.99, $9 million, you get this percentage, that's what it is. So if I sell how many streams, how much money do I get? It's not being translated and, and it's not working for the artist right now. And I just want to speak to that in yeah, the no, music industry. Talk. Like, that's fucked up. And we need to find a way to figure that out the same way the writers are figuring out. The writers are striking because streaming they can't get paid because when it's on the platform it's not like in the box office in the box office if it does all these numbers you may get it up oh it did this many here's another check but on streaming you got three hundred thousand hours that somebody watched your movie where's the money and i know i'm going off a script right now but fuck it this is business (laughs) yeah this is business you know what i'm saying this is a room full of business people and somebody may hear this and be able to do something about it so that way the next artist don't have to struggle or cry or try to figure out how to get to his money. Because some of these artists are streaming millions and millions and millions and millions of fucking streams and they don't got no millions of dollars in their pocket. So I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Talk that talk. Yeah, like... I think you, you, I can't get up there. I can't get in front of a bunch of people and and talk like that right now just in the position I'm at. I can't even really comment on it other than I, I agree. I agree with him. Yeah. And is that too, does it come from 
it's probably a multitude of things. Being probably being with a label, Spotify, contracting this, that, the other. Yeah, and and for me specifically, um, I have like several different way means, you know, ways to get money yeah. off of you know radio. That's why that radio singles and radio number one is where music is where music makes the most money, and so it's just gonna take time. And I think that. I think something just passed recently where we're actually getting more of a percentage now from Spotify and streams, which is good and it's mm-hmm. in the right direction. Um, and I think as time goes on and as more subscribers are in that pool, then the penny looks bigger. Yeah. Um, but I, I agree with that, bro, because especially like an up and coming rapper who doesn't have a deal, but a song's gone crazy on TikTok. And then they're getting like 40 million. If you got 40 million, 50 million streams on a song on Spotify or across streaming platforms, like that should When you say be across a, streaming platforms, you're talking Spotify, even even like Instagram, uh, TikTok, like when they're TikTok, using it like I that? I believe started monetizing. But yeah, like, like Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, all of the okay. places you can stream music. Yeah, like if I'm just an up and coming kid, doesn't have a label and one of my songs that I've uploaded onto my Spotify account takes off and goes crazy. And it's on all these playlists and it has 40, 50 million. He's right. That should translate to substantial amount of money in my pocket. It doesn't right now. And definitely ain't going. If the, if four dudes wrote it, I get a few hundred bucks. Fuck man. Like I just asked my business manager about this the other day, not to talk about my finances, but this is like, I was like, yo, what? So I had 11 songs on the Dangerous album that I wrote. I think two of them were number ones, maybe. And then... Talk about the Morgan? Yeah, Morgan's on the, album? On the Dangerous album and 11 on the most recent one. Yeah. So just Morgan songs alone. 22 songs off the last two albums, not including, like, Heartless and other things. Morgan songs alone. Um, you got to look. I mean, you proof. Let's see here. Let's... Give you an idea. <clears throat> you proof go to Morgan's. Are you bringing up his Spotify? Yeah, you proof has 306 million streams. Wasted on you has 414 million streams. One thing at a time, 115. That's million. two songs. You're over 700 million. Right. Like you're you're at a billion. So, so yeah. So that's two you're, songs. You're at a billion. Okay. So I'm, and with all of the songs that I have out streaming, not just Morgan, just every song that I make money as a songwriter on on Spotify. You're thinking just writing alone. This isn't this yours. Is just stuff. as a songwriter. So the Kane Brown, the Sam Hunt song, yeah. all that Jelly stuff. Roll, all that. I'll make probably I, I probably make like four grand a month off of that. So at the end of the day, maybe fifty five thousand dollars a year off of billions of streams. Oh my God, bro! Yeah. That is, once it's, I mean, even if it is split up to co-writers, you know, like, it should be more money than that. If it was the 90s, if, if we were getting paid like songwriters are getting paid in the 90s, bro, yeah, it's like, writers just used to be balling out. Like, if you had 22 album cuts on Garth Brooks. Yeah. You are Garth Brooks. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, it has changed. That has changed, and that, that will, it needs to balance out because, you know, I'm, I'm going to be all right, but that's like... For sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just... That's you're all just somebody... If that's the example. only way somebody's going to be making some money, yeah. they need to be making more money than that to translate how many times that song has been listened to. And let's just let's just say out of... And though you, those are like three songs that could yeah. take up a, a billion streams. Let's just say out of that billion... Labels are getting paid from it. That's where the money... The money <laughs> will get back to the labels. They're making tons of money. They own masters. Yeah. And which, you know... Revert back to the a Jelly Roll episode on here, and he breaks that down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does a good job breaking that down since he's like an yeah. independent guy. Yeah. But let's just say out of that billion on the, just picking three songs, let's just say a million people bought a CD or, or an album or a record, whatever it is, back in the day. Like and a you hard just, copy, like hard Walmart. Copy, and you even just made 2% off that million. like To the moon. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're... you're I'm Elon Musk. <laughs> You're making a lot more than $55,000 a year across all these songs that yeah. you're kind of talking with your business manager on. Yeah. Be like, you know. Yeah, because I was just curious. I didn't have it. My father-in-law asked me that the other day because it, it is a hot topic right now. And he was asking. I, I couldn't answer. So I recently just asked Ballpark. And I was kind of shocked because 
Yeah, you look at just those are the only two I can see the numbers on that I've written, but you're almost to a billion right there on two of them. Yeah. You got to imagine you add the rest of the other 20 up, you're probably on another couple billion. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know what the fraction is. What's 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 fifty five thousand dollars versus two billion? What is that? Bring that up. We gotta calculate. We gotta <laughs> fucking calculate what this, is dude. That? Yeah, I mean, you're in the point. I mean, you're in the point. I'm not zero. fishing or complaining. About no, I know, but you're like you're you're just giving, you're giving context, giving of, context. What, of what this industry yeah. is like, and it's yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I didn't take it as all like you're bitching. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, that is wild. what it is. Like when you're when you're performing, you're adding a lot of value, and it's like, man, this stuff is really getting capitalized on and yeah. you know the amount of work and the amount of time you put into something you're curious how the business model does look yes i mean it's like if you're putting in all that work in the industry that you're in and you're only making let's just say you're making fifty five thousand dollars a year just period just after all you're like okay maybe i go look at the right. get in the insurance game or sell some medical yeah. medical equipment because you know let's yeah, yeah let's, get, let's do away with the music yeah no seriously but i mean dude that's what there's a lot of there's a lot of I mean, now I'm a publisher too. I have a publishing company, the Cadillac Music, and I got I'm signing kids to write songs. It's like I want them to be able to make a living writing songs, even if they don't get a radio single number one. Like, but if they have a song that pops off, like my guys need to get paid because the song's popping off. Yeah, it don't matter if radio's picked it up or not. It, it should get that way, and I think it will. And I'm hopeful that the machine will continue to grow. It'll keep trending in the right direction. Right. And you need guys like Snoop and all these other ways. It's like, you know, it's like, kids are yeah, it's, it's almost like you need, it's like at times you need quarterbacks and the best players at every position to kind of like, they have the microphone to kind of say those things because they're a little bit more, they can afford yeah. to do those types of things. They can afford to step they out from a mic. Yeah, people off. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And what was that? 55,000 divided by 2 billion? Look at there. Point zero 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 two seven five. That's like how much you get per stream. On a two billion dollar or two billion streams, that's and to make fifty five thousand dollars a year. That's how many you get per stream. How much? I'm not good at math, but, but you do it. <laughs> yeah, that look we're not good at math, but do it. <laughs> yeah, Ern, if that rule comes into effect, how does that change for people who are already who are already in the industry? So for your for your three singles, right, the ones that we just talked about, do they back pay you on that stuff if it changes, or are you just kind of like, hey, it is what it is? I, starting now, I don't know the answer. Question. I don't know the answer to that. You're saying if it, you're saying if the rule if it changes in the in the future, do you end up getting back paid for the? I doubt it. I doubt it. I I bet yeah. they just bump the percentages up moving forward. Because ultimately, you yeah, know what you're getting a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. That would be a lot of money to pay on the back end. Yeah. If every writer got paid out on the back end, I would just imagine the percentage gets better, and you know, especially when you're a hungry artist early in the like early in the game, you're almost just excited because lay you're getting labels. They're going to pay you money. You sign on that dotted line. You don't necessarily have your head fully wrapped around because you don't know that you're going to explode the way that you might explode. Yeah. And then when you look back, that's me. I've, just, I've had my head down for ten years. Yeah, and been broke for nine of them. You know, yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. like oh, I know. dude, I looked up. I had a, I had a check from BMI in 2019 for what's BMI? BMI, they're who pay out off of all the money. You okay, in the music, there's BMI, ASCAP. There's a couple different. I'm with BMI, and like I had a check from BMI. You get paid four times a year, every quarter. It was like, uh, I think it was like ninety six bucks, two thousand and nineteen. What one of my quarters? Have you been looking for a new trusted exchange for your crypto trading? If so, check out Netcoins. Netcoins is a safe and secure platform to buy and sell crypto. It supports some of the most popular cryptocurrencies on an easy to use mobile app. Netcoins has been in the crypto game for almost 10 years in Canada, and it's now available in the USA, offering no fee trading with over 35 top crypto tokens to buy and sell. Plus, you can stay on top of the action with limit orders and push notifications so that you can trade instantly when the market moves. And for limited time, Will, you can get $25 in cash. I know you need it because the Wi-Fi on Delta is ridiculous. But for a limited time, you can get $25 in cash to trade on the app when you use the referral code BUSSIN. That's B-U-S-S-I-N. That's for a limited time only. And download the Netcoins app today, available on Google Play Store. Download the Netcoins app today, available on Google Play Store and app. God, f down <laughs> Download the Netcoins app today, available on Google Play Store and Apple App Store. Or learn, or f asshole. Download the Netcoins app today, available on Google Play Store and Apple App Store. 
or learn more first at netcoins.com. Different guy. What have, we, what have you seen now? What's, what's the biggest check you've seen now? Do you need me to say a check to make you feel? Yeah. The biggest check I've seen, and it was when I was, uh, I was a restricted. Um, that's false. Probably the biggest check I've seen. My signing bonus when I came to the Titans was 250000 After tax, I was looking at like 150, 160 because there's no state tax in Tennessee. But I would say the biggest was a two-week check when I was on Washington. I think it was 180, 180. And that was like, I looked and I was like, yeah, frame this. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Because I was fired up. My first practice squad check um, was like $12,000 and then after tax down to like seven or eight. Good. And I was fired Did up. Did you that necklace? <laughs> <laughs> Shit's real, all right? Immediately like, went to Icebox. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I bought a pair of Air Maxes yeah. and bought an Xbox, got set up a little yeah. bit. But I was fired up when, I, you know, when you're yeah. seeing a check like that. But now, ball's back in your court. What's the biggest check you've seen? Like, this is... This is $1,000. Oh, my God. Let's fucking go, dude. I've seen a check like that. <laughs> well, my business managers see it. <laughs> I haven't looked at it myself, but I've seen it, on, I've seen it in an email. It's pretty crazy. Dude. That's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, no, it's insane. I'm trying to be humble about it because it's fucking insane. You are humble. I can tell you're very. Yeah, I'm like, like, I don't like, like oh, talking. Man, I don't, I don't like, like talking. This, man. Man. I don't like talking about it. I was it. like, oh, I was on Shane's pod yesterday and trying to give him flowers, and he does so bad accepting compliments because he's just <laughs> he's all about making fun of people that think things are cool yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. So you can tell he gets real queasy when I'm serious. Yeah. I'm like, bro, you you're doing it, man. You're crushing it. Yeah. You should be pumped. You should I, be proud, I am man. pumped. I mean, yeah. It's it's like, think great. about how hard you've worked, bro. You yeah. just said broke for nine of them. Yeah, like you just real, got for sure. not like you got some massive house, but you got a nice little farmhouse yeah. that you've been able to get into. And you're building a little farm, like you got yeah. your little family going. Like Ryman brought all, all my good luck for sure. Because when when we got pregnant with Ryman, I didn't know how the hell we were gonna do. We could not afford having a kid when we got pregnant. I was just fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, what are the odds? And then, oh, my God, we're getting <laughs> pregnant. You know, and then, and then, you know, literally, I think I, my first number one was, like, right around the time Ryman was just about to be born. And that was COVID. Like, COVID happened. I had my first three number ones during the shutdown. So, like, my world. So, the touring my wor stopped, stopped where you're going to make my, some money. My world started spinning as soon as the world stopped spinning. And Ryman came and then. Right when Ryman was born, we picked up touring again, and it's been going ever since. And it's just like me and Delaney say all the time: Ryman brought really good luck. But Ryman, I owe Ryman. Ryman will be fine. <laughs> Ryman will be fine. You have to keep him connected to the story of what it took. To, like, yeah, bro, you should be extremely proud. Like the sacrifice that goes into number one. I know how much you tour around. Like when we've been trying to get you on the pod, you'll be gone because you're out touring around a lot. You're moving a lot, yeah. and with the family and a kid, bro. Like yeah. I have a, you know, it's we're, we're, we're kind of the same. Like yeah. Yeah. I have a 13, 14 month old right now. Like the times you have to leave your, you have to leave, and you, you those conversations you with, your make fight, count. with your wife, you're planning out your schedule. Like, hey, I'm going to be gone. For a lot of the year, but like, yeah. you know, now you're getting to taste a little bit of that sweet nectar that you worked so hard for. So I like, I understand the feeling queasy and like, man, you know, I'm about to yeah. drop a number that not a lot of people, yeah. you know, have gotten to experience yet. Yeah. But it's like, bro, you've worked so hard for that, man. You work so fucking hard for that. For and sure. you should never be ashamed. I'm not ashamed. You should never be ashamed of anything like that. I'm not ashamed. And, it, and it's like, it is motivating for me. It's like, for me... That is not where I'm like, all right, I got it. I'm done at all. Now it's hungry. And it's not greed. It's just like, yo, like, I've been given this opportunity to be a voice of a generation of music. And, like, whether it be from behind the scenes as a pen or now my own microphone that I'm holding. And I want... I want to be that example for the kids that are just now getting to town. who are looking down the barrel the next 10 years, grinding to no ends and just making enough, making whatever their pub draw is, like probably 30 grand a year for a few years, you know? And, and like, there will be light at the end of that tunnel. Yeah. If I could do it from working at the donut den, barred out at six in the morning <laughs> to like, to sitting here now talking about necklaces with you yeah, you know yeah, man it it can happen and it's just not giving up and being relentless with it being delusional also like 
And I love the fucking look in your eye about it because it's true. Like it, it's inspiring to hear that, like, you know, what's your, the trajectory you're on right now, because you have a story that you're so connected to on all of that grind. Like it, it, it's never a success is a microwaved. Right. Like you, it's not like you just oh, no. now got this. It's not like, it's not like you fucking, you and Morgan Wallen were best buds and you're fucking yeah. like, he just sings and you write stuff and you're just like, no, you're it's... just right there in the back hip pocket, like just making a fuckload of money. Like you've had to grind. It's like Hardy. I heard Hardy decade. say we, we were all broke together and now we got some together. Yeah. And it's been, it's, that's, that's another, our bond is cool. Cause like we were really grinding. We've been grinding. Yeah. It's not, it's not an overnight thing. And, um, I think everybody knows that too by now. Overnight stuff can happen here and there like because of TikTok. Yeah. But Craig Wiseman said on my podcast, he said, everybody has to pay their dues. You either pay them on the front end or the back end. Mm. It's way better to pay them on the front end. Right. And um, I, I totally agree with that. And I've paid my dues and God, I'm still paying them. Especially in the artist thing. Like I'm still in the front quarter of my artist career. Things are going great. I'm getting great show opportunities. Songs are going good. My fan base is growing organically and naturally. And, like, they fuck with Earn. Yeah, but Like, there's bro. people There's people that, you know, turn turn on to Earn just from Instagram. And then they realize I do music and vice versa. They, you know, I like this song. And then they see it. I'm just yeah. a guy. I'm just one of the guys. You're just one of the boys, yeah. man. And I think it's, it's always interesting because it's like when you start, like, getting successful and everything else, like, we've all had so much imposter syndrome. That you almost get nervous talking about it because a part of you feels like, am I worthy of this? Like, or yep. am I, is my value really worth this? Am I going to turn some people off saying this? Because maybe I'm not because we've had so much imposter syndrome, syndrome along the way. Yeah, I'm bad about that too. Yeah, Real man. thing, imposter syndrome. Yeah, it is. Because you're like, like, like you said even earlier, like you, we love being fans of all these people. Like who would have thought back in the day when you're spraining your ankle at a Wiz Khalifa concert here in Nashville yeah. and thinking like, man, how fucking sick would it be? If like, yo, 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 him. yeah, Wiz is the man. Like, have you ever met me? Like, oh, yeah. this is just another fan. I remember I DM'd Wiz probably, or like Facebook messaged him something when he was in town. Like, yo, like, would love to smoke. <laughs> you know, like, like, like he's getting yeah, 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 yeah. ass. Like, yeah. A, <laughs> never saw it. <laughs> B, if they saw it, it wasn't even him. Yeah. And C, not smoking with you, kid. But then, yeah. then we're in LA and I'm smoking with him at Staples Center with Michael Phelps. And he's down in the fucking pit. He's down the pit. Trying trying the rose, dog. That's cheesing. That's so crazy, dude. Did you get that picture? That picture Isn't that legendary? Epic. Oh that's man, incredible, man. Yeah, I, got, I just got bro. fired up. My nipples got hard. Yeah, dude. Oh. Mine too. If yeah, not, bro, it's cool. And hard. I, I will forever. My first time on the bus is like a landmark in my mind for when things started. Like that's a, that's a prominent memory for like the beginning of the next four years of my life after coming on this bus because like that was right at the very beginning of my artist stuff and then croon was like we were just getting the stuff started and we were still in that gravel lot like it was the start right. of even us right and then i pulled in that gravel lot to get my in-ears uh i pulled I, next time i was back there was when i was getting my ears whatever for in-ear monitors i was like holy shit this is the og bus lot now there's like a little thing there where i got my ears and yeah like, crazy but it's always cool to come back and check in because life be changing a lot in between every time I'm on this bus. Every time, dude. Mm -hmm. Every time. And every time we, we get together, we're like, yo, we got to link more. And then we're trying to like find time to, yeah. to hang and, and all else. Y'all's fans are all, you're, the, the boy, all, shout out, the boys. Like, you know, every shout out I can, the fucking people, boys, People would never know who I was if it weren't for this bus. And then they'll see me and they know I'm one of the boys and it's fire. I mean, you've done your Community. thing. Like, it's dope to have a platform to give more, to... To give that more, because Chandler will come. Chandler will come on, or he'll hit us up. Yeah, like, yo, people came out to the the Vegas thing. Like, yo, I saw you on bus with the boys. Yeah, but it's just it's just cool, man. And yeah, the fuck. I've been sparring with Chandler, getting him ready for his fight. He's gonna whoop that ass. He's gonna whoop that ass. I think he's gonna shock a lot of people. Dude, that would be now. Hot. Conor McGregor's documentary just came out, and that thing is juicy. We need to create Ch a Chandler a documentary. Have you seen the uh, McGregor McGregor Forever? I refuse. <laughs> You're like, I'm not about that. I'm not dude. about that shit, dude. It's, it's, fuck Conor McGregor, dude. <laughs> yeah. No, that you let me rephrase that. That's me getting behind enemy lines yeah, to learn dude. a little bit more about what the buttons are. Yeah, we'll talk about McGregor. We'll talk about McGregor the next time I do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right now, dude, is <laughs> Mike fuck Chandler. McGregor. Dude, it's yeah. fuck McGregor right now, dude. Yes. 
What a nice guy, dude. What a Michael Chandler is one of the nicest humans on earth. On earth, I've bro. I've just recently gotten to know him a little bit. We play golf, and he's a big only use a five iron guy. Dude, he loves the five <laughs> he iron. The guy loves the five iron. We'll be no matter where you are. He's like, oh, I'm getting the five. Yeah. Hey, bro. I coming to the kids party. He's like, sorry, I can't make it. Be sure you get the five iron out for me, though. I'm like, yeah, dude. We're not even golfing. Yeah. You guys wanting the five iron there? Yeah. Dude, Mike's uh, dude, he is just a good soul, man. Way different than when he's inside of that octagon. Mean in the octagon. Loves a bloodbath. Loves a bloodbath. Oh, just, it's gonna be a bloody fight. Either way, bro, it's gonna be such a good fight and it's gonna be bloody. I just see people talk about fighter IQ, like all these different mm. techniques and things like that. Like Mike Chandler's competitive spirit in fight for fighting. He's like a fuck. He like is like Tim the, Tebow of the yeah, UFC. Yeah, dude. Like, yes. I believe in this guy he right is, here. Bro. Like he is the <laughs> gladiator, man. He, Tim he, he Tebow. doesn't cuss. He doesn't cuss. Does he not? No, the the one he slipped not too long ago because he was playing bad. We we went out to golf. I forget where we went. Golf was, okay. Golf will do it, dude. Goes, <laughs> fuck. And I was like, hey, yeah. brother. Hey, relax. Yeah, it's take it a, easy. Yeah, we're just game. He Excellent. just kept telling me, like, hey, this is the worst I've ever played. I'm like, Mike, I am not good. Like, you think I give a fuck how you're hitting? Like, if anything, you get to lose balls with me. I don't care. Yeah. He's, he feels bad about being bad at golf. Could kill anyone on the course. <laughs> Could kill anyone on the course. <laughs> That's golf, though, dude. But, yeah, just a nice soul, man. You be playing lately? I played, actually, I only played that one time with Mike and fucking my back. You know, I felt that the rest of the Where'd you go out to? Did you go Hermitage? I think it was Hermitage, yeah. Yeah, it's it's for the goats are all out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. Is that by where Steeplechase is? No, you no, you played Harpeth. Harpeth. That's what it is. Yeah, we, we went to Harpeth. I knew it was sort of with an H. Yes. Uh, but yeah, we were at Harpeth. And then Mike and I were playing, and then it's one of those courses to where if somebody comes in at the right time and it's not a foursome, they add people in with you. I hate that. I hate that, too. I just joined out at Temple Hills. Fortunately, we had a couple. We you, They were... It can be bad, though. It can be bad. We met somebody's like, oh, you met my brother. He was a fullback for Ohio State. Like, you guys were just out there for the spring tour. So it, you kind of had that common. He's like, yo, Michael Chandler? Like, yo, this is the best day oh, of my life. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're people pay, you know, five grand to go play with y'all on a scramble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, My parents, they go play Harpeth a lot. And and they also, they, they got a spot down in Sparkleberry in, like, Fort Myers. And they play golf all the time. And they get paired up. People all the time and dude it's been so funny the last like year my dad will call me and be like uh well i mean you won't believe it and i'll be like bet i will <laughs> and he's like we were just playing with somebody and you know, then we got to talking and told him i'm earnest dad like no way like, you got some fans out here man. it's like <laughs> it's like y'all could make it through a round just like not doing that <laughs> yeah you could make it through and i'm playing golf after this at temple hills with who um you know duck you know D delvin hodges yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's playing. Uh, and then Chandler, not not Michael Chandler, my Chandler, Chandler Walters, and Rafe Tenpenny. You've met Rafe, Mitchell's brother. Oh, that's his brother. Yeah. Mitchell's brother. Okay. I don't know if I've met him. Yeah. I met Doug, though, because Laney came and did bus stop. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Because he was on, uh, was it the Steelers or the Rams at the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good dude. Good dude. Shout out Duck, man. Um, But, dude, the getting, getting paired up, like, so at, at Old Hickory, I'll just put myself down on a tee time and get out there and at, bring somebody with me. No big deal. We're just mm -hmm. going to play two. Don't worry about it. At Temple, you got to, I like have to just make up a foursome so that they don't just add two people on there and last minute. Cause like most of the tee times would be like two spots. They'll have like, you know, McGuire teeing off at 10 10. There's two spots left. Like, I don't know, McGuire. Don't want to play with McGuire. Yeah. Not playing golf today. Please, yeah, no. It's like, no. It's like, I'm not, not playing golf. I don't want to do that right now. I don't want to spend six what, souls you're... getting to know some guy I'll never see again. Yeah. Or, or a guy that I'm going to have to see again. You know? <laughs> Unless you're prepped for it. Like, if it's like a charity event, you know you're involved in this four man scramble, which, by the way, I think That's like. That's different. I mean, absolutely yeah yeah, yeah absolutely the energy to scramble yeah, you're ready you're just you're ready for it you yeah. know what you, you know what you're having to I'm do trying to go have a low-key round of golf with the fellas yeah and i don't need jim jones over here taking hey jim jones would be sick <laughs> jim but jones would be sick. okay don Mag, don mcguire we're sticking with mcguire don mcguire like don, don trump standing over yeah, don trump standing <laughs> over his ball for 50 seconds to shank one it's like, dude, hey, I'm getting up there. I'm stoned. I'm taking no time. If the ball goes to Jehovah's Witness Center over yeah. here, I don't care. I'm grabbing a new ball. I'm grabbing a new ball. And I'm asking somebody, hey, you got a new ball? I really didn't get Can I borrow a tee? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We should, by the way, I think like. Hey, woman, <laughs> two transfusions, please. I'll give you a $100 bill. There you go. Two transfusions. They're both for me.
We should um could be a man, by the way. <laughs> said, whoa, man. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, hey, whoa, man. Easy. Part, you, part person. Part, what do you go by? Yeah. Yeah. Go by whatever you want. That's hilarious. Addressing a cart girl in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cart. A hey, person on the car. Can, can I, I have a beer? Can I please get a beer? That yeah. would be great. Not Bud Light. Yeah, I, knew, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. Oh. It was coming. Uh, I'm going to come. Yeah. Is there anything better than that first sip of coffee in the morning? No, it's like getting your first kiss every single day. Awkward, but thank God it happened. Stella Blue Coffee supports pets unlike big coffee. Fucking pets got to do with this. Because it supports pets. Stella Blue Coffee supports pet, supports pets. So for every purchase, a portion of the proceeds go directly towards helping homeless pets. Oh, that's incredible. We yes. love our pets. You can get yours tomorrow available on StellaBlueCoffee.com and next day shipping on Amazon Prime. Get your coffee now before they sell out, and they will. It's available in pods, ground, and whole bean. Get yours today, Will. They can, God damn it, they can barely keep the coffee in stock. That's how fast Stella Blue Coffee is selling. And do you, did you know that Stella Blue just came out with their uh, cold brew? Oh. They did. So if you're a cold brew, you like I'm a cold brew coffee. guy. You're a cold brew guy. If yeah. you don't like the hot, especially if it gets hot outside, there is now a cold brew. Go to StellaBlueCoffee.com and use promo code BOYS. That's B-O-Y-S for 10% off your next order. The perfect gift for Father's Day. We hate big coffee. We hate big coffee. Help yourself. Help your dad. Help the dogs out there. We hate big coffee and you should too. Buy Stella Blue Coffee and support the boys and the dogs. Listen with the dogs. <laughs> we should, uh... We should do a fucking golfing charity event, dude. Yes. Golfing. Like us. Golfing with jelly. the boys. Stroking with the boys. Stroking with the boys. Or the what we tried that one time. Stogies and bogeys, dude. Stogies and bogeys. That was a disaster. What long day, but a, it was a good day. It was a Just great a very day. Very long. You kind of saw the production that has to go into it. And it's kind of like, man. This we should have only played like four holes. Yeah. We played nine holes with Will and Jelly. Jelly's not bad, by the way. He's not. And we had a we had a lot of drinking and cigars and talking. We were out there for twelve hours because we're we're looking at doing like a stogies and bogeys segment, similar to like all those golfing uh, that golf content that's out there, like on YouTube and doing like bully you with tequila, bro. Like Jelly's the nicest guy ever until he's trying to get you a drink tequila. It's like Bubba, 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 some tequila. You gonna drink this tequila? It was like look, 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 look. It's like, hey, man, it's not a shot. <laughs> it's not a mixed drink. <laughs> Please stop. Stop the tequila. <laughs> I told you I don't want to drink. It's one in the afternoon right now, I'm bro. pregnant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we should golf sometime. Yeah, it'd be a lot of fun. A lot of, maybe you we never me, have. Me just... and Johnny McGuire, whoever. No, I mean, who would be a good scramble with us? Honestly, we should get like two scrambles going on. I think that's the best because you need some shit talking against somebody else. Have like two foursomes going, mm -hmm. and then you know meet at the meet at the turn. Yeah, a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll decide. Talk about where you're at on the scorecard. Yeah, decide if you're even going to go play the back nine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I'm not an 18 hole guy. I am not, dude. I'm good that's for what, 15. Not me, bro. Like I, I'm fighting to get to nine. Oh yeah, I I'm nine is like right about. So like, if, let's say I start off the three holes. First three holes, I'm like, fine, like par, bogey, golf. Then four, five, six starts to get shaky, and then seven, eight, nine. I'm kind of bringing it back. I've, I've made a couple good At shots. At least on one hole, you brought it yeah. back. And then, so then by that, then we're on nine. It's like, I can smell blood. So I'll do. I'll get ten, eleven, twelve, and then it's like, oh, it's going downhill so fast. Thirteen, fourteen, still going downhill. Fifteen. I'm drunk. I gotta go, dude. That's Three more holes. You guys ready to go? Yeah, you guys ready to go? This one? We're Wait, close yeah. to the clubhouse. My partner's like, actually, I'm even through 15. It's <laughs> yeah. like, okay, well, I'm leaving after 15. You, like, see the parking lot inside. You're like, hey, this next hole, should this yeah. be our last one? Don't even tell him. Just, yeah. where did Ern go? He's, he's I'm going to go grab something out of my truck. <laughs> hey, the wife called. She needs me home. I'm a big go get the car, leave the cart where the car was guy, and people probably hate it. Oh, people that's probably not hate good, Ern. That's not You got to take the car back. But what I do hate doing is, like, cleaning out the trash. I always feel like I do. You also don't have to take it back. Do you feel like you do? I guess so. Do you not have to? Probably should. You probably should, but if you if ride I'm playing with at somebody. Bellamy Country Club, I'm taking the cart back. Yeah, if I'm yeah, playing dude. at Odunk Country Club, 
Harpeth. I'm drowning. I'm drowning the cart. <laughs> the cart's not hey, here. it's out there in the water. Yeah, yeah, I'm taking this cart home with me. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I'm going to get my own golf cart for Temple Hills. Where can we go next? Because I do want to do with, with Earn. I want to do shout do out. No for shout out. Yeah, we should do the Family Guy. Before we get into the Family Guy, you did have a tweet recently. We'll do this for the music, and then we'll get off and transition and all the fun shit. Pet peeve of the week. Shout out, no free shout out. Fucking all that kind of stuff. And our Family Guy episode that you had a mastermind concept, by the way. Your recent tweet, next album fitting to be different. Be different, yeah. Tell us about that. Elaborate. Yeah, so. Are we talking, are we talking, hey, are we talking when we were on the couch that one time? No. Pause. <laughs> no. No. When we were coming like over that. the couch? Yeah, we were on the couch that one time, fooling around. Yeah. A little tomfoolery. We were on Taylor's couch. Oh, yeah. Oh, when we were on we were Taylor's couch. You were kind of showing us some some that, tunes. That, um, no, that will not be on this album, but we're talking, he's talking about Depends on the Year. If you know, you know. Um, this oh, so next, it's already known. Well, it's not. No, I've talked about it on my podcast and played like Serotonin, but that was like a year and a half ago. Okay. There was time and place. That shit will come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this next album, I basically, so the Flower Shops era for me was like all strictly traditional country music, which that will continue into this next album. But I'm going to be sprinkling in some songs that I would probably have normally given away to other artists, like that specifically like not kept on Flower Shops because it didn't fit the aesthetic of Flower Shops, the album. And this next one, like, I've already posted a clearly that Hanging On song. Like, I'm not going to be afraid to have a couple songs on there that just are, like, a little more smacker, banger vibes. Like, mm -hmm. Or, like, um, a little more modern sounding. But I've also got, I mean, it'll probably be 20 songs or something like that. Because I've got several that are super traditional. I got this one song called Dollar to Cash. It's like, give my last paycheck to paycheck and give my last dollar to cash. Like, it's an old school country song. This one called Bars on My Heart, old school country song. So if you loved that about Flower Shops, I'm not abandoning that song or that sound. I'm just adding some shit that I've always had in my bag that I've given away. And I've like, I ignored that part of my bag for my own artistry. But on this next project, I'm going to dig deeper in my bag. And like, nobody's going to really be able, if you don't know me, you could probably hear some stuff and be like, he switched up. Or like, what happened to this? Like, nah, bro. Nah, I've been doing this shit. <laughs> I just, I've just been not putting it out. You know yeah. what I mean? Is that a timing thing? Is like, now you feel like the, the, the right mix is coming up, whether it be with popularity and everything else. So yeah, you're like, All right, I, mean, I, I think, can... I think it's also like having a lot of shows under my belt now and knowing what my fans, like what, a, what those moments feel like in my show. Like when I play, like when I have, you know, when we now we have Long Live Cowgirl, we have that Cowgirl song. Like, I can have something like that in my set that's mine that wasn't a, a Morgan song. These can be my songs now, too. Yeah. And it's like, my fans are going to rock with me regardless. But I, I, for the naysayers or people that come on, it's like, he switched up. I did not switch up. I took a break from doing this originally to keep it extremely country to build the brand that I want for longevity, which is to be a member of the Grand Ole Opry and die doing country music. But I might throw some motherfucking 808s in there this year. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I might. Yeah, you your might little get... Grand Ole Opry line juice me up a little bit. Yeah, that's my, that's a childhood dream. I want to be a member of the Grand Ole Opry one day. And I'll, I, like, when, when I'm with the Opry band, like, I won't go play the, if it's got 808s in it, I ain't playing it at the Opry. Right? It ain't for the Opry. That's, and I'm not going to make the Opry band fight their teeth and try to play something that ain't yeah. fucking for the Opry. When, when I went in and cut the entire Flower Shops album, it was going through, in my mind, in Joey Moy's mind, the Opry filter, the Opry band filter in our heads. Like, and, it, and it translates because when we show up to the Opry, the Opry band, they love playing our stuff because, yeah. you know, these guys, 50, 60 years old, and they signed up, they probably dream, their dream, I want to be in the Opry band. Why? Because it's traditional country music, and this is what I signed up for. And a lot of times, that's not what they're asked to play at the Grand Ole Opry. They're having to play stuff that isn't what they signed up for. So my gift to the Opry band is we're going to play some country music when I'm coming through the Opry for the rest of my life. That's what the Opry's for. Dude, I love that. And, and I think, too, like anybody who's like a real fan of yours loves when you're showing off all of your range, like diet, dipping your toe into all these other 
It's just Genres. about to apply like Moscato. About to hit the mula I like the lotto. Life been kind of rocky, no Apollo. I'm going to be the leader, watch them follow. There's plenty bad bitches, but their heads all hollow. Hello, hey, what up? Let's kick it. Break her off like a Kit Kat. Quadruple flip and stick it. I'm um, about to get that. Swerve and then I switch back. All four lanes on the highway is my way, so stay in your driveway because this, that deep fried chicken with some turnip green shit. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That it, I, it, yeah. No longer you. It's no longer us. Just me and this bar stool collecting bar dust. Fell in love again. And all of my friends say it's a good place to start. Is it a quarter past two? Once it ain't you, it's just bars on my heart. Do some emo. The, uh, serotonin. the, um, it's gonna be a phenomenal cut up. Serotonin, let's see. Oh, just, I'll just, whenever you, I'll, whenever. Just, I'll just make up some me. I can't remember the, uh, unless there's an emo song you love, just fucking hit that. <laughs> hey there, I know it's hard to feel. I don't care at all. Yeah. Fast these lights turn as these wheels. What is it? Uh, I cut my wrists and black my eyes. Cut my wrist and black my eye. So I can't fall asleep tonight. Or die. Because you kill me. You know you do. You kill me well. You like it too. And I can tell. You never stop until. Final breath is gone. Spare me just. Three last words. I love. Yeah. Fucking Hawthorne Heights, dog. About that life. Oh, I, put a, I put a couple scars on me in middle school, dog. <laughs> I put a couple scars on me, dog. Where's Ernie? He's in the bathroom. Does anybody know what he's doing in there? <laughs> now I'm getting cut. I used to just, I used to just be cut, dog. Yeah. <laughs> One of those, like, and then you get out and you're kind of showing it. You're showing a couple of your friends, yeah, just probably. just a little light scissor cut. Never going to do any damage. Just let them know you I'm just, about that life. Yeah, just to get the friends talking. Oh, you like, think I'm just listening you, to you Under Oath. You know, really, yeah. <laughs> you know Ernie's cutting himself now, right? Like, yeah. get everybody talking dramatically about it. Yeah. I think we need to have an intervention. He's 28. Yeah. <laughs> he's 28. These tattoos cover up several cigarette scars, but not all of them. I, I've got, oh yeah, dude. Heck, the dots up here. I used to put cigarettes out of myself. Yo, Once. think about the uh, <laughs> think about the clip. He just gets to go from rapping, country, emo. What else we got? <laughs> what else is there? I don't know, man. That's about it. You got anything, G? I know you're a fucking. Have him do something else, man. We got Earn here. Make him perform. Yeah. Make him fucking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dance, dance, dude. <laughs> you've, you've heard of Burt Kreischer? Oh, brother, who hasn't? Stand-up comedian known as The Machine. This month, Sony has given us a new must-see movie to kick off summer starring Burt himself. Based on the outrageous true story-ish, I say true story-ish, of Burt Kreischer that blew up on the internet, the movie picks up 23 years later after the iconic story from Burt's signature set, his true experience with Russian mobsters, while on a booze-soaked college trip. And that trip from college has come back to haunt Burnt. Why am I talking like this? Burnt. Burnt. <laughs> that trip from college has come back to haunt Burt. Hey, dude. That trip from college has come back to haunt Burt and his estranged father, played by the legendary Mark Hamill. Or Luke Skywalker. Gotta know it. Are kidnapped back to Russia by the mob to atone for something they say he did. Together, Bert and his father must retrace the steps. The, all, him and his father, all they got to do is they got to retrace the steps of his younger self, played by the hilarious Jimmy Tatro, in the midst of a war within a sociopathic crime family, all while attempting to find common ground in their often fraught relationship. I'm definitely watching it. Bert Kreischer is the man, the myth, and the machine. What a, what a, what a white guy. What a white guy saying right there. The, hey, the man, the myth, the legend. Yeah, dude. Let's change the legend to the machine. The machine. There it is. Get your tickets now. The machine is now playing rated R. Uh, all right, Family Guy. Let's mm. fucking. So that one, if you guys watched the last episode, was well, Jelly was on here too, right? Yeah. We talked about a South Park episode that we yeah. could create that involved Antonio Brown, Tom Brady, and Giselle. Yeah, and the, the, the yeah, just hit me, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, Tom Brady, seven times Super Bowl champ. Because we 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 called it back to uh, what's her name, the guy. It was it was, it was, a, it was, it was like gonna the be bad a trade, tra yeah, the bad trade between America and. Uh, we'll give you Brittany Griner back if we can get Tom Brady onto the Patriots again. Yes, right? was, yes, was the thing. But the only reason he wanted to go back to New England 
Just to get back Everybody's to celebrating and parading that uh, Tom Brady's coming back yeah. home. He goes and, right past. Yeah, the he's going right past the parade. He's Close driving like in a little Sonata or something. He's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Giselle, Giselle, me, Tom Brady, seven times. See AB Antonio Brown poking out of the window. <laughs> yeah, 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 the top window, yeah, towel yeah, yeah. on out. <laughs> and we're making fun of like the the war room, kind of calling it to the draft room. You know, yeah, a lot right, of, right. Like how, the, how the figures kind of waddle and move yeah, sideways. Yeah. Like, trade him this for this. All the massive situation room TVs are just the draft. Yes, yeah, bro. The NFL yes. Draft. So that was our South Park oh, concept. Okay. Earn called me. I was actually sitting in the parking lot. Earn called me. He's like, hey, you got a minute? I got this. Uh, I Dude. got a family guy idea. Yeah, I was walking around Bellevue Publix talking, workshopping this <laughs> with you. I'm pushing the cart. I'm sure people are like, this guy's off his rocker. Um, it, let me give a little context how we started this. Yes. Uh started thinking about Jesus. We were talking, I was talking with Shay Mooney, something about Jesus being good at golf. I don't know how I got there. I was like, Jesus is probably not good at something. And then I was thinking about just the realistic Jesus resurrection moment of like, you know, this man really escaped a tomb. And yeah. then I was like, how could that be? And I was like, yeah, he's like the first magician. And then it was like, you know, I like had a, I had this vision. And when I think in bits, family guys, the, First one, like I can conceptualize bits really well when putting it in Family Guy yeah. in my head. So, like, I see, like, I saw this scene of like Jesus doing the Houdini, like escaping water, right? Like tied up and he's outside of the thing. And then, so then I was all right, so t let's take it back to the beginning. The episode would kick off, and you've got, you've got the Griffin family is, so you got Peter. Because there's a Jesus character in Family Guy. Yeah, but he's not. So Jesus throughout this episode is just Stewie with a beard in Jesus garb. Yeah. Joseph is Peter. Mary is Lois. Okay. So the episode starts with Peter coming home early and Wagmire is like the neighbor. Yeah. Getting out of bed with Lois because Peter comes home early and jumps Here's out. A Virgin Mary. Virgin Mary, yes. who obviously got knocked up by Quagmire. And so then, you know, you got the nativity scene. Jesus is born. Boom, boom, boom. Let's ju just think in this. Quagmire is definitely one of the three fucking wise <laughs> men. <laughs> three wise men giving gifts. Yeah, yeah. Keeping an eye on Lois. Like, hey, yeah. or Mary, have you said yeah. anything yet? Like, yeah. no, no, no. Like, oh, still, oh, he's, still think I'm a virgin. Oh, he's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but like, so, so there's that. So then you, so you got, all right, Jesus is born. It's Stewie. Fast forward. Then like, you've got a Jesus at like 13 at the lunch table, like doing card tricks. And the kids' minds are just blown, right? Yeah. He's like, oh. The first magic trick Jesus ever would do, you know the family guy, doctor, the guy that's like, I have some terrible news. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So they go see the, the baby doctor, and Jesus does, <laughs> got your nose. <laughs> He's like, wait, give me that. Yeah, no, wait, give me that. He's what? like running around the what fucking, the yeah, running around yeah. the room. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, Hides in the fire truck yeah. or something. So he learns the art of, of magic and, or the, the trick and deceit. So then he's, you know, doing the, doing the cards. It's like, Jesus, do the trick, do the one. And so then it's like Jesus at 27. And, and then you see like, you see this little motorboat going off into a sunset. And it's got two figures. And one of them's clearly Jesus from the back. And yeah. the other one you don't know. And you just hear right here is perfect. And he goes side profile, and it's Chris Angel, it, like Bible Chris Angel next to yeah. Jesus. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, I think this is going to work really well for you. He goes, we've got six, like he's got like, we got six like little clear cubes just a half inch under the surface. Because you can see uh, some of Chris Angel's yeah. tricks like on right. fucking YouTube. Right. Yeah. So, so he's teaching Jesus the walk on water bit. Yeah. And then you've got, obviously, you can you can throw as many in there as you want. You can do the water to wine, all, yeah. all that, right? Water to wine was another one. Like, yeah. basically everything you're seeing that, yeah. you know, could be looked at as a magic trick if you fucked with it he, enough comedy-wise. He he's got his guy, like, yo, pick up your mat and walk. And it was like, <gasps> and then, like, oh my God. Then you see, like, a quick little exchange of a $50 bill to the guy, to the coins. coins. It's a bag of coins. Yeah, it's like, wait, weren't you the same? Hey, wait, that's the same guy that was blind last week. Like, you know, like, <laughs> people, some people are catching on. Um. So then it, it's like, but, but remember, we were talking it through, and um, get to the end, 
Yeah, but to get to the end, but there's some context. Like Chris Angel at that time, Chris Angel is somebody who's passed through time as a time traveler. Because Chris Angel's actually forever 33 years old. You know, yeah, like Chris forever Angel. that way. But also at this moment in time, he's Judas. Yeah. Because oh, he yeah. gets so jealous of Jesus. This is down the episode. Yeah, yeah, Remember, right. he gets jealous and gets him, you know, Jesus gets him killed and everything the credit else. For his, for yeah, his bits. yeah, because at the time when they're, tra- right. when they're translating everything, yeah. they can only write it on a rock. Right. So whenever he's walking on water, changing water to Ryan, water to wine, the, the the witness the witnesses to all of it they're only able to write this rock and basically Chris yeah. Angel Judas and Jesus yeah. they're yeah. able to essentially con over everybody. time the Jesus yeah, time, legend like, has grown because, yes. yeah okay so um you can you can fit in as many, Seth MacFarlane we can fit in as many as you want in there yeah. there's endless scenarios you can play there but the end is modern day and Chris Angel is a bum in the streets of Vegas, Vegas going around being like, no, I taught Jesus everything he knows. I'm the real Jesus. I'm Jesus Christ. And like, like, uh, he's, he's, like he's, 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 he's the Antichrist. He's like snapping his fingers. People's Dasanis are turning to wine. They're like, yeah, right. This is Jesus' joke. Like, you know, what a bum. Yeah, what a bum. And Chris Angel's like, no, no, I'm serious. Yeah, he's just <laughs> cashing weekly check or yeah. like, you know, a check just for work. Yeah. yeah. G- G- <laughs> Dude, Man, I knew I should have. Yeah. Because remember, uh, yeah, we were right. talking. You're just a crackhead. (laughs) You bum. Throw something at him. Hits him in the head. Throw some Team America in there because... How do you think I got my name? Chris Angel. (laughs) I'm an angel. But when he decides to turn on Jesus because Jesus is getting so much credit, he's like thinking like, hey, you know, I've kind of written these bits for you. Yeah. And Jesus kind of, whatever it is, kind of silences him, whatever. We can write up in there. But he that's when, because Judas turns his back on Jesus, he ends up getting nailed to the cross. And it's like, you know, Jesus dies in like three days. He's like a human being, basically. And yeah. it's like, well, what the fuck? I thought he was going to like live through this. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they think he's superhuman, not yeah. knowing that yeah. he's just doing all these magic tricks with Chris Angel, Judas at the time. And unfortunately, we could write in that like his curse, Judas's curse is that he has to be the same age and live over time. Yeah, he never dies. Yeah. Never dies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just fucking in this can, modern can, day scenario. Yeah, you can, like, yeah you, I was the original. He's like Forrest Gump. He's at every major event throughout <laughs> yeah, history. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so anyways, dude, if anybody has is watching this and just wants to scoot this over to Seth MacFarlane or tag him in it, uh, and Seth MacFarlane doesn't even care, bro. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be honest. When like, we got done with that, I was like, dude, that is such a funny just episode oh, the first, of humor the first about. Magician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can tie in a lot of things. It's like when Chris Angel's modern day, then you can call back. Like when everybody out there is feeling, whether it's a little uptight or queasy about like ma- making fun of Jesus and all these Bible stories, you can call back to the modern day Chris Angel to where all the people in the streets are just yelling and pissed off that he's like the, the actual Antichrist. family guy Jesus that we, that we use is, yes. is one of the people calling Chris Angel a fraud. <laughs> he's a fraud. He's a fraud. No, no, I'm Jesus. Yeah. It's like you guys are, yeah, dude, because Vegas is full of people claiming to be Jesus. <laughs> yes, guys. yes, dude. Oh my God. So I think it could be really funny. Obviously a little fucking nutsack religious, but it's all good. Yeah, but yeah it's all, yeah, like that's one episode. Family guy. Yeah, we're talking about, we're talking about humor and like, yeah writing up stuff like that. I think that is fucking It makes me hilarious. so happy to yeah. come up with bits and think about stuff like that. Knowing yeah, I love that, that you call. I love that you call. You're I like, hey, you I, you got a I got a family guy. Like, <laughs> how can we piece this thing together? Yeah. And I was like, bro, that is brilliant. Like each scene, then you start filling the gaps. You can see it. That's the, that's the, the pro and the con. Is, the, you came up with the South Park one at the high level. Just like, you can see it in your head and you yeah. know it can be made. Yeah. It just has to be made. Like I yeah. could, you could voice all the characters. Um, you know, like you could run, you got so many opportunities. Like Meg, Meg could be at the well with like the prostitutes. You know, Jesus, Jesus is kicking it. Oh, oh yeah, be, oh, yeah right. Jesus was a slimy guy. Yes, he was so when he's like twenty-two, <laughs> when he's young, Jesus, and he's dealing with everything else. He yeah. comes up with this verses of saying like, Jesus never sits with the the yeah. good and the healthy. He sits yeah. with the sick, yeah. the taxpayers. But that's just so he can do his dirty work and do all the cards yeah. and everything else. He's, at, he's he's like he's kicking it with all the prostitutes at the thing, like yeah. spitting yeah. game, and then like somebody sees it and he just starts like, like. And you and and ye without sin cast the first stone. Like he's over here with the fellows rolling dice and shit. But then like somebody starts somebody saying something, he him. starts drawing in the dirt, doing the jelly roll biz. Yeah. Like and you without sin cast the first. That's yes. his only. That's his only comeback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He uses it all the time. I thought you were supposed to be, and then he just drops a fucking bar on him. Yeah. I love how we both just lit up and figured out. Oh yeah, that's oh yeah. He was he was like a, he's like the used car salesman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Type that's of guy. He's able to surround himself and fucking this oh, slime. So funny, bro. Hey, that <laughs> that needs to be done. Um, how do we do that? 
we gotta get somebody to animate it too. Yeah, it, that's, yeah, but man, think if it was truly like because we think the Family Guy, the Family Guy platform, like, listen, ooh, have that. We want to see it just come to life. Have it. Yeah, we'll clip this it. out so we can tag Seth. Yeah, yeah. Seth, or, and maybe we got to figure out who some writers are, who that's might have an end. Yeah, we can do some recon because, you know, they got a massive team. And, bro, they take fan submission episodes. They make them. That is it. Like, that is a fucking episodes. good one. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that man. That if that, but that would have been, it like... It takes those, and then that, we're in. That we're window... We're in. We just got to get in. <laughs> Like that one I know because South Park does such yeah. a good job of being up to date yeah. with some of those things, and that one was such good timing. That was great timing. That window probably passed, right? Passed for sure. Maybe. Yeah. Mm. She's in. You, 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 you can do one I'm on uh, seven times Super Bowl. Supposed to come back and put his family back together. Yeah. No, what you got to do is do one on uh on him buying the Raiders, buying partnership into the Raiders now. I'll be thinking. Yeah. I'm probably take a little victory lap after this and come up with something decent. <laughs> Yeah, I think I got something. Where are you at? Yeah. Based on like, because you know the tuck rule and everything like that against the Raiders. Oh, Patriots, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. I did not think about that. Wow. But you had fucking football IQ. No, brother. I told you my, it's dial up internet over here. Oh, uh, yeah. Somebody says something, I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. Dude, are you ever going to coach? I don't know if this falls through at some point in time. Who knows? No, bro. Watching you give the, give the speech to that team, Arizona State, got me so fired up. And it's like, bro. Honestly, I know you're bullshitting, but the, but I'll be the same way. Sometimes if I bullshit a character and dial it so much, you're on. You were on your Denzel dog, like you were on your Denzel. You were that. goading in front of those. I appreciate that goading in front of them boys, dog. Like, dude, before this, like, yeah, like when I when I was done with ball, if I was gonna be done with football, I was gonna train. I was gonna get into coaching immediately. But podcasting, you're saying if this falls through, yeah, if like say one it. day, if like you know, I don't know when, sometime in the future, and then I just get the itch, like you know. I want to get into coaching now. Yeah. Have you just been for fun? Because the whole thing, the whole thing with this is like, it's so awesome that we've been able to create this platform because if I transition into coaching, you're now needing to work for that job. Right. So you'll always be like trying to play that political game of climbing the ladder and being a coach one day. Right. And being around the right crew of people and, and, mo and moving the family. That. And like, if I, I would love to get to the point to where it's like, man, I just want to coach now because I feel like I'm where I want to be. Financially, all these things to where it's just like I don't, I don't have to take yeah, go a job. Go get a defensive coordinator job at Lipscomb. Right, 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 and climb the ladder that way. Because yeah. my agent, he reps a lot of coaches and even GMs too. And yeah. he's like, a uh, conversation he had when I was, you know, basically talking to him about being done. He was like, uh, "How fast do you think you could fast track into being a coordinator?" And I was like, "I think fairly quickly. Just I guess I need to be in the rooms and kind of figure out the operation of how everything goes down." Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I was fired up to do that speech. Oh, bro, it was great. I was fired up to do that speech. It was great. I can talk about drink their beer and take their women. Show them four quarters of fuck you. Yeah, that was the one I was yeah. like, yo, <laughs> hey, I don't even, get, dude, I'm about to smoke four quarters of fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> hey, that's yeah, bro. I mean, dude, if Compton was my coach, like, you you, I mean, you got this. Don't don't worry about it. But I think. Yeah, locker room camaraderie. Like I would want to play really well for cool. you after after getting talked on like that for sure. <laughs> would I make you want to quit smoking? No. <laughs> He's like, man, I want to play for you so fucking well. No, I'd yeah, dude. I think you'd make me quit smoking. My seventh grade football coach, Coach Temple. Shout out, Coach Temple. Uh, he tells this story, and I don't remember it, but I believe it. Um, he was like chewing our ass hard one night at halftime i'm an idiot bro i think i went up to him after and was like nobody gonna like process it i could see what's so funny is i can see you being that way too bro i was like bro just talk at us yeah. <laughs> you're just losing your mind spitting and then like ain't nobody talk to us yeah, yeah talk just talk to us man um one time eighth grade he was our middle school football coach eighth grade uh, and now his son will I love that you had that his son will temple mental and middle in middle school, school coach yeah now. uh i was a halfback and i was like had a solid i had like three solid runs back to back to back and i get tackled on our like 20 yard line right in front of our sideline and the referee was like i didn't i wasn't wearing my fucking hip garter and tail i just wasn't yeah it's annoying 
Because back then, it was like still the belt. Yeah, you had to loop yeah. all your pad, yeah. your hip yeah. pad, your tailbone yeah. pad, and Screw everything that. into the fucking Screw pants. That. I had my compression shorts on. Yeah. Good to go. And anyways, the referee, like I would have probably gotten the ball again on a sweep or something because I'd, I'd taken it down the field. And um, referee's like, no hip pads. You got to find some hip pads. Coach Temple was out of his gourd upset immediately. And he never cut. Like, I'd never heard this man cuss at us ever. And he comes over to me, gets me by the back. He goes, you bastard. And, I, and dog, I like, but I about shit my He's like, you bastard. I'm taking, uh, shout out Corey Woodruff. I made him give up his fucking hip pads and I'm getting in there and think. Hey, give and, me those. Yeah. So after the game. He's trying to get back out there and fucking out there Dude. immediately. And after the game, we we're walk, were playing station camp. Anyways, uh, we're walking out. Everybody shake hands. I'm walking back to the sideline. And I've known Coach Temple my whole life. That's why I felt like I'd, like, talk to him a different way. That makes sense. Long, but, and I we love had a good him. relationship. Yeah, we, we had yeah. a good relationship. And uh, we're walking back to the sidelines. He's like, I'm, I'm sorry for yelling at you. And I go, uh, I go, it's all good. I was like, I ain't going to tell nobody you called me a bastard. And he goes, what? What did you say I said? I go, you called me. You called me a bastard on the sidelines forty minutes ago. I would never say that. I would never say that. I can't believe you said I would say that. I'm like, oh, you're tripping, dog. Coach Temple, to this day, my brother, you called me a bastard, and it's it's fire. all good. It's all good, dude. It's like, all good. You got to coach hard at times. I was a little bastard. Yeah. I still am. Yeah. But, yeah. But like, don't back up off of that. Don't think of all the, the domino effect of it. Somebody, you know, he yeah, called me a bastard. I'm not going you know, to tell parents, my mom. The parents like, going on strike. We need this coach out of here. Yeah, no. The man called me a bastard. I thought that was awesome. The coach is but all fucking good. Got, you got to get verbally got abused. He me saying it's all right that you called me a bastard than he did about the hip pads that caused him to call me a bastard. You have to get verbally abused on the football field, hmm. especially when you're young, man. Yes, bro. They, please These bastard kids don't know they don't fucking know and people are getting so soft bro you gotta like, give them direction like when like um like our boy flipping out on on our boy uh dilfer you saw the clip of dilfer oh yeah, yeah. losing it on our boy that's a little yeah. more than verbal abuse but also they had a tight relationship yeah his, uh dude's dad played with Vrabel, so like or not Vrabel, uh, um, dilfer dilfer had seen the kid grow up yeah and I'm sure in that scenario, at that point in time, dude had probably lipped or flipped his helmet or something. And Dilfer's a hothead and knows his dad and seen this kid grow up. So probably just overstepped the, I'll take care of this. For, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, absolutely. I'll yeah. son your ass real quick. And like, I saw that and it fired me up to see that, hey, no, sit, sit down, sit down, sit down. Like, Dominated yeah, that kid for a second. Yeah, dog. I, I thought that was like, hit a swing on him. I thought that hit him. It is it easy, brother. No, I thought it was awesome. And what I hated was how much shit he called. I know Dilfer got was hot and cold as far as you, his that, relationship that, with Lipscomb, but I, I didn't see a problem with that. But you you know how you know how it is when things go like viral on the internet. Yeah. People oh, aren't yeah. used to that kind of stuff. I mean, our head coach in Nebraska is Bo Pelini. I mean, you type in Bo Pelini fucking outburst, and there's shitload of YouTube videos there. Yeah. Like, you know, we're, you were verbally abused. Like, I, I could time you with a fucking sundial. Like, oh, I thought this. Like, no, you're just fucking stupid. Yeah. Getting punched in the chest, fucking uh, tobacco, spit in my mouth. That was his brother. But yeah. you get coached fucking hard, man. I mean. Smacked in your face mask. Dude, type in Bo Pelini mad and just bring up the images. Yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. Kids are really, like, going to be bred I mean, to be look, soft. just Bo Pelini flipped. Go to those first three photos. Yeah. Losing it. Just losing his fucking mind. I mean, he's calling referees cunts. <laughs> like, dude, it was. I remember when his brother, like, fought somebody after the Texas A&M game. I think it was a camera guy because he had a camera. He's like, get that fucking camera. He's like, they were just so mad. And they would, like, black out. They almost wouldn't even remember the next day. Or they did. And they're just like. I got a feeling they've got mafia in their blood. Yeah. They grew up in Youngstown, Ohio. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's like they, <laughs> they grew up in options. Youngstown, Ohio. Go coach football or go work for the dumpster company yeah. and let's sling drugs on the low. <laughs> yeah, yes, bro. Yeah. Like he got, they just fucking beat white knuckle Sally up. Look at it. Go to that. Go to that third row in that middle one. Like imagine being a referee, bro. It never helped us out. No, like, look, no. Look at that. Look at this oh, coming out. He like swings his hat and almost hits dude, the referee in the face. Tough day to be a referee. <laughs> yeah. You always, I'm sure the referees hated. Officiating with Coach Bo on the field. Yeah.
Yeah. But he's like, don't you fucking touch me. And it's like, brother, (laughs) take it easy. Yeah, you saw that when Sark put his hands on that uh, that dude in the tunnel before a game. Oh. Look at it. Look at it. He's in the old boy's face. (laughs) He's the guy. He's a TV guy who's coordinating when they can run out of the tunnel or not. Oh, I I did see this. Sark Sark was just kind of standing there, and the guy was just standing next to me. He kind of touched him. He's like, don't put your look. Like, don't put your fucking hands on me. I saw that. I saw that. And we interviewed him. (laughs) Fun dude. Good guy. Yeah, cool guy. Somebody, it seems like, yo, I'd want to play for this guy. But just these coaches, they just, I mean, you just get fucking, you're just seeing red, ready to absolutely go to war. Right, I, right. I think Dilfer was so polar opposite at Lipscomb than what we grew up with with Coach Mack, who was an old school, traditional coach. Still get in your ass. Mm-hmm. Always using euphemism, like, you know, world nut. He was old school country coach. Yeah. And then you got Dilfer who came in and, like, Through all the tradition, my program, we're going to run it like an NCAA college football program. Which I went to a couple of their practices because Taylor and I would work over at Lipscomb a couple of times, but they were running practice and he was running it like a college program, a college and NFL, like period, seven on seven. Like they're moving, jogging, like which operation is high. There are a lot of the, a lot of the former players and stuff felt the type of way because they feel like what they built just didn't get respected at all. I get that to some extent. My dad, luckily, the the baseball coach and the baseball program is in yeah. great hands, and they've been very, you know, they named the field after my dad. They've been great about all that, and they got McAdams you know, named after Coach Mack, the Mack Center. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think Dilfer came in so hot, it scared the shit out of the parents whose kids were in middle school, and now, you know, they grew up thinking it was about to be one thing, and then Dilfer, and it's like, oh, your kids aren't playing. I'm bringing in everybody. Bringing in my, bringing in my luggage. Yeah, dude. Louie. Yeah, and Louie. And CPA was, used to be a problem for us. And CPA has just gotten beat to smithereens every time we've played him in the last three years. We, what did we, uh, I think we, in the last two championship games against them, I think the score was like 80 something to nothing. Like, it was like insane. We beat them. There's probably that stat. Lipscomb CPA 42 to zero in the state championship game, dog. So where are you at Brentwood? Yeah, CPA like the CPA Lipscomb games have all and basketball. Those were always like the big games. Before that, it was Lipscomb Good Pasture. Um, but y'all were probably Brentwood Ravenwood. Those games were probably lit. I mean, at the end of the day, you're building culture, and there's always like literally yes. every year. There's always going to be a learning experience. It's not like it's not like every coach strength coach, whatever, feels like they always have it figured out. You're going to have learning moments. Everybody slips and be like, okay, I yeah. could have done that differently. But, you know, when you're, when you're. He was prepping himself to go exactly where he's at now. He was, yeah. what we're talking about. He was, he's, he's starting his climb back to. Yeah. I, yeah. And at the end of the day, like, you know, of course, when things go viral like that, everybody's going to have an opinion about it because you're armchair coaching at that point. And you can see things a lot more clearly and you're sitting you know, you're sitting in AC and everything else. You're not in the heat of that moment. Absolutely, you're able to look back on something and be like, yeah, of course I could handle that differently. Like maybe you have a conversation, you're having a conversation by, hey, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. And the outside, outside noise is still going to be the outside noise. Right. That's the whole point of like sports. Not, that, like I'm not saying that's the whole point of sports, but that's like the growing pains in sport. Like when yes. you're around each other all year round and you're trying to build culture and everything else and you have some moments that you slip, but that's the beauty in sport and competition. I think that was a good. That was a good moment for the kid and Dilfer, probably. Like, bro, you got to get yelled. Like, get yelled at in your life as a as a kid in a in a team environment. Have somebody have an authoritative figure get in your ass because they love you. Absolutely. And like, and that's it, not your like that's not at your house. Like, it's not your dad or your mom. Right. Like, it's because you're gonna go out in the real world. That was happening daily. Yeah. Yeah. Now everyone just sees it. Yeah. Yeah. Now everybody sees it. Everybody's yeah. got to come. So it's going to, it's going to always seem bigger than it actually is, yeah. but you keep everything like you still, you know, on the internal side of everything you're having the communication with. Thank you. I appreciate that. I butcher knife slipped through a potato and I cut half of my fucking nail bleeding everywhere. It really doesn't feel that bad though. It feels on the front. You know, you can when just, was not, it? two days ago. I was at home too. The wife was out of town, so Rue's fucking crying. Want me to pick her up? You know how that shit goes, dude. Don't complain. No, <laughs> it didn't even fucking. Happen. Yeah, what happened? Nothing. 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 <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah, I blood everywhere. She was cleaning off blood from the the cabinets, the fridge, <laughs> down by the floor, and everything else. I was like, I'm sorry about. It. I didn't see it. Like I'm I'm trying to fucking. 
Trying to make some lunch, got the little one. Yeah. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. You're like trying to fucking, you know, stop the bleeding. Jeez. I'm sitting on the floor next to Rue because she wants me to pick her up. My sweetheart, I, daddy cannot pick you up right now. I'm fucking, it's not, it won't stop bleeding. But I appreciate you seeing that, me working through this pain once again, always battling. Should we do shout out, no free shout out? We interrupt this episode to talk about. <laughs> Taro. Taro is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Taro, you can book any car you want for just about any occasion from a community of local hosts across the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Book an SUV for a road trip, something easy and affordable to get around on vacation, or just test drive an EV. You can get a vintage car. Sick. I've gotten sick cars on Taro, by the way. You can get a vintage car or something classy for a special event, a little prom night. Fellas, if you're still doing prom, yeah, it, is every, <laughs> it is that time Love of year. Is in the air. Love is in the Get air. that Turo whip. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Find your drive or get boring rental cars at Turo. <laughs> Rock that Turo up <laughs> and drive a Turo. Dude. Back to the episode. Back to the episode. <laughs> back, to, back to the episode. <laughs> You want to talk about his tweet about mentioning that he would uh he would trade Derrick Henry just to see him win a Super Bowl? Yeah, I mean that was back in the headlines when it was like a topic of potentially trading Derrick Henry. I don't know if those rumors are still circulating. Look, I want Derrick Henry on on the Titans. I think what I was saying though is, I I, I I've never actually gotten to know Derrick. We've met a couple times. It would just suck. For him to not have a Super Bowl and be as elite back as he, and I was just saying, be part of a team that can make that chase. For I would be willing to let him go as a Titans fan to see him win a Super Bowl with a team that he can win a Super Bowl with, because the window for that is like not as big as it was three years ago. Yeah. So, fuck yeah, I want a Titans Super Bowl. I would love that, and and it will happen eventually. But I want Derrick Henry to win a Super Bowl. But if we can do that together, then by God, then let the, may the stars align. Yeah, that's all I meant by that tweet. I just because you feel like, damn good of a fucking running back to not have a piece of hardware. Seems like you feel like the boys in Tennessee are in a rebuild, don't you? <laughs> I'm just trying to get that out of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in a, we're rebuilding. Seems like you're you're good. saying Tennessee's not going to win the Super Bowl. Ernest, care to comment? Well, then this would be the one year we do because every year I'm like Titans are winning the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, Super Bowl. I know, I know. You just hate seeing, especially the last few years when they had that window with the right, mm. the right firepower. Three years and, ago, and, and injuries due to injuries and just everything not aligning. Twenty nineteen, that's the game, man. Like I feel like everybody, you know, we're in the off season now, so everybody's winning the Super 2019, Bowl. Twenty nineteen, we went to Baltimore and won. I thought we were going to win the Super Bowl after stopping the dynasty, yeah, dog, beating yeah. the dynasty no, of Tom was, Brady in New England. Because it's when you get hot matters. It's when you get hot matters, and we got hot at the. Perfect time. Nine and seven regular season, just on that back end, making the push. Back end heat matters. But yeah, I would. I mean, dude, maybe, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe we're gonna come out hot. Everybody's, you know, that's why you play the game. Why you play the game? You never know. Because the next year we were eleven and five when we were the, and it didn't feel like a better season. Yeah, and we got bounced by the fucking Ravens mm. at home. And we might have been the two or three seed then, because I don't think we were the one seed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a home game. Uh, and we got bounced by the Ravens, who we beat earlier in the year. And it was kind of like, I remember it wasn't until in the middle of the fourth quarter, I was like, we really might lose this game. Because we were down most of the game, but I never at any moment thought we weren't going to win because I felt like we were we were clicking. We were firing on all cylinders. And even when we had injuries, the team always seemed to overcome it. Because that was the year the O-line was banged up. Taylor tore his ACL. Yeah. Something else had happened, but Derek still ran for 2,000 yards. Because he went off in Houston when he needed like what was it one seventy to get to two thousand? He and, got like two forty. Yeah, yeah, bro. And he like you just felt like oh man, we're gonna we can go deep, boys. And we got bounced by the Ravens, which fucking sucked. They danced on the field. Yeah, yeah, I know. Danced on the danced on the field. It's crazy you let that happen. Doing the I know crazy crazy you let that. I know how I would have handled it. Yeah, <laughs> I was just there like just walking by. I just couldn't believe we lost. Yeah. And then uh, the next year. You guys went, or the Titans went, um, twelve and five because of the extra game. Yep. With the one seed, a bye week, and then lost to the Bengals. And it's just like you had those three years, especially when that that would have been, yeah, that's what I'm, yeah, would have been ideal. Those were the, all the ingredients were there. Yeah. 
You had the line. You had De- we had the line. We had Derek. We had uh, tight, AJ Brown. So hard to know that AJ Brown and Julio. We've been this close. Really, we've been this. Close. Yeah, and I was a I was born Missouri boy. Fired up that Mike Jones made that tackle on like the inch yard line. Who? Mike Jones, baby. Yeah, uh, you uh, always have to. I was in the good old grocery bagging. Kurt Warner was. The greatest show on turf. Marshall Falk. That's when he was basically mm, Marshall created. Falk, that's dude. when he created coming out of the backfield and hitting a, a hot go route. Yeah. Running back out of the backfield. Those were some of my favorite NFL uniforms. That era of Rams jersey was sick. And the next, I think it was the next year they might have went back to the Super Bowl, and that's when the dynasty for the Patriots started. Or the next couple of years when. 2004, when Finitary, 2004, I think, was when. Yeah. So what was the year of the Rams? Rams Titans. Rams Titans. Rams was 99. And then the uh, Rams Patriots was. Quit watching after look that. Up, that. Look up Rams, Rams Patriots Super Bowl. Wait, that was 2001 because it was right after 9 11. That's right. Good. Yeah. Good memory right there. <laughs> um, yeah, because we were hyped that the Rams made it back and you're playing the Patriots. And that was Tom Brady's year where Bledsoe gets benched because he gets injured. Well, not gets benched, right? Because he got injured. No, he got he got, he got hurt. And then Tom, he, he well, comes back and gets healthy, but Tom is already firing. They kind of don't want to mess up what's happening. Well, Tom gets, I think Tom gets hurt or, or something in the AFC Championship. Bledsoe comes in, leads the Patriots to win the AFC Championship. Then they got to make a decision who's going to start the Super Bowl. Nice memory. The AFC Championship was against the Raiders, right? The tuck rule? Yeah, I want to say that's the year. Yeah, that's the yeah. year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Man, that is cool living back then. Was that Kevin Falk, the running back for the Patriots? I want to say it was, yeah. Man, bro. That's back when you're, we're just young and we're just fans yeah, of so many different players. That's the year like Torrey Holt, Isaac Bruce are in their prime. Ooh. Roll. Yeah. Yes. Yes, man. Yeah. Titans had a squad. Titans, dude. Frank Wycheck. The D line, O line, everywhere. Yeah. yeah, man. The late nineties, early two thousand. Titans came in hot from Houston. Hot. Yeah, man. Those are fucking They're fun years. Played bro. in uh, Memphis. Hey, is Houston going back to the OG Oilers uniforms this year? No, no, it'd be us. Okay, I heard. I heard Texans might be going powder blue and red. We'll meet you at the state line. I would love <laughs> that. Would, is dude, that the rumor? Is the uh, I don't know who I just heard that from, but I don't know. Houston shit about Texans me. wearing the Oiler retros. I know the Titans Instagram right. account has been teasing. I know the oh, Titans. Well, the Titans better. Bro. We were the That's Tennessee the Oilers. We were the Tennessee Oilers. Remember that rap? Yes. Yeah, Good. Because Portnoy, can we just be the Oilers again? Maybe that's the spark we need. Those helmets, fuck, bro. Those those are the the craziest uniforms ever. Yeah. Those are so sick. Those would, I mean, those unis are, those are top three. They're going. I'm not trying to make an emotional, hey, those are the best. No, I'm telling you right now they are. It is. Yeah, but you guys, you guys are homegrown. Like it's, the, the powder blue, no, get, bro. You guys. Powder blue. The powder red blue. accent. I mean, those unis go fucking so hard. Did you not ever, did you get to play in a powder blue uniform? No. Well, then you don't fucking understand. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know what it's like to suit up in the powder blue of his dog. <laughs> Look at that, dude. That guy, somebody's wearing that jersey right now on Shelby Avenue. <laughs> I passed him this morning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that Somebody's wearing an oversized Eddie George Oilers jersey right now. Smoking a J, Smoking dude. Smoking cigarettes, dude. Sitting at Gabby's Burgers. Yeah. Just talking about the old days, man. Got the matching flat bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Denimed out with the crispy white Air Force Ones. We need to get rid of Tannehill. I'm saying like that's what he's saying, not me. <laughs> you heard it here first. So I'm busting with the boys. We need to get rid of Tannehill. You guys, you guys see that, that Will Levis? He's got that. He kind of looks like Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, looks like Aaron Rodgers. Well, uh, I love uh, how everybody just got quiet and looked. Like, is this you think that? I love that you think that. I'm a pro. I'm a pro. Don't play a rookie quarterback in his first year. Hmm. Are you a pro? It's not my responsibility to train this guy. 
Because that's Tannehill. That's Tannehill. Are you, are you pro? It's not my responsibility to mentor I this think guy. it's not my responsibility. It's not like my sole responsibility to train this guy, but I do think it's like you... you could have handled that different with the yeah, media. You're, 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 yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm a pro. Get media yeah, yeah, trained you're, before you're, you're you go pass, answer You're, you're passing things. along any types of tits, tips and advice. <laughs> you said tits! <laughs> You're so, so horny. It's so <laughs> funny. I was just uh, excited. You got that fired me oh, up. Oh, you dude. said dance. Yes, dude. But you are like, you oh. want to give any types of tips and advice. It's like when Rashawn got drafted in the first round, I was so fucking pissed. But you'd sit in some of these meetings and think like, oh, man, this dude, you know, Rashawn, you got to, he's missing some questions that he don't need to be missing. Yeah. But I do think it's, uh, you do have some responsibility in, in, in giving back to the next generation. Yeah. Whether or not you're tight or sensitive about what your situation might be. Yeah, and don't show your cards like that by answering. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. hey Ryan, if you see this, you won't. But if you do, a little bit more confidant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sick from my quarterback. <laughs> yeah, like you were that's always like going to be the starting being, cue. That's somebody being like, "You got a small dick," and you're like, "No, I fucking don't. <laughs> no, I don't." It's just like, getting oh, mad. I don't even fuck. know. I didn't even. I didn't think you did, but now you yeah. obviously have a small. Dick. <laughs> you obviously you're extremely you small. You have the smallest. You have a clit, and you hate it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you clearly hate it. Yeah, dude. <laughs> well, oh, hey, it's been real. I'm gonna go make this tea time. Oh, you got tea time. You wanna do a shout out? No free shout out before I get Give out me of here. One, yeah. Shout out, no free shout out, and a pet peeve of the week. Okay. Uh, shout out, no free shout out. The Delta Lounge. You're a Delta nice. Lounge guy. As of recent, dog, the Delta Lounge makes the airport experience doable. Go get in the airport. Doable. Go straight to the Delta Lounge. Spread out a little bit. Go to the bar. Have a champagne. Go to the food thing. Have a little barbecue, some eggs. You're good. You don't have to deal with all the hustle and bustle of, you know, Ricky Lee running with his roller backpack <laughs> trying to make a 847. You're good. You're in good time. So shout out no free shout out the Delta Lounge. Um and pet peeve of the week. Their $17.95 charge for fucking Wi-Fi. Is that what it is? Yes. That's uh, free in the Delta Lounge. I'm sure it's free with the tag that he gets, but if you're just fucking comparing airlines here and you don't have I didn't uh, even know. You don't have a badge of honor to anything. Southwest charges eight bucks for that Wi-Fi. Delta charges $17.90 fucking five, bro. That's insane. But you're paying to be on a Delta flight, not a Southwest flight. What does that mean? It means there's better seats, better service. Your so you should probably you, not getting you canceled. Should get the, you should get the cheaper Wi-Fi. I don't know. I don't, look, I mean. You must have something going on with Delta. That of the week is grown men bitching about Wi-Fi <laughs> prices. <laughs> no, well played. Well fucking played. Um, Fuck you. <laughs> fuck, fuck me, fuck, <laughs> fuck me. Um, no, let's see. A pet peeve of the week. There's a few. I probably, did. I probably got a few. Um, let's. I think let's overall everybody be pretty conscious about personal space in general. But like lines. Yeah, was that yours last week? Yeah, bro. Good. Get off my heels. Get off my heels. If we're in line, I'm not on your heels. Get off my heels. And it's not even a social distance. I don't care if you have COVID. <laughs> I hope you have COVID. Yeah. I want that challenge of COVID Please trying to enter my COVID body. And be within six feet of me. I'm not asking you to be six feet apart. Yeah. Be, be that far apart. Yeah. <laughs> that's all. Be hey, that's can I get... Somebody's on you. Can I get... You start pushing back. Space. Hey, that's fire. Yeah, yeah. That's fire. <laughs> hey, that's my fault. Can you just... <laughs> maybe just back up to there. Just like as I'm in your space. Yeah. Just stick your arm. Hey, it'd be huge if you could just... <laughs> with <that> thumbs up. <laughs> so, all right, I'm gonna go try to break 120 today out there. Hey, good luck, hey, bro. I love you. I love you too, man. Thanks and for congrats having me. On your fucking success, bro. It's Thank fun you. to watch. Thank you. Bus. Next time, hey, next time I'm on this bus, I might have a Grammy. Is that what you're putting? Is that what we're putting in the universe? Sure. When but, are the Grammys? But, but hey, but I'm not coming back ever again if I don't get a Grammy. <laughs> Wait, when are the Grammys? February of next year. Okay. All right, we got. Those, wait, you got to. We're bad. gonna need you. Yeah, yeah, no. Especially during football season. I'll have a Grammy one day, dude. My Grammy died in two thousand and seven. I think my Grammy and my grandpa died both. So I'll get. I'll get one back. 
He did it on the back end. We were talking about. Oh. oh I'll never get a Grammy. <laughs> <laughs> I might get a new grandma. But... <laughs> yeah. Anyways, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. That's my time. Thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh shit! God, that is a white. It thinks like 